This episode of Comedy Bang Bang is brought to you by Squarespace. Turn your great idea into a reality with Squarespace. Squarespace makes it easier than ever to launch your passion project, whether you're showcasing your work or selling products of any kind with beautiful templates and the ability to customize just about anything. You can easily make a beautiful website yourself and if you do get stuck, Squarespace's 24-7 award-winning customer support is there to help. Head to squarespace.com slash bangbang for a free trial, and when you are ready to launch, use the offer code bangbang to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Reese's Pieces for all my nieces and a curfew or two for my nephew. Get to bed, kid. Welcome to Comedy Bang Bang. Mm, that one doesn't work. It does not work. I think it's Reese's Pieces. <laughs> I know. That's and, how it's pronounced. Reese's Pieces. And I think there's also, uh, they were trying to go for an internal rhyme of curfew and nephew, which also doesn't work. Nerfew. Nerfew. Do, do you think M Medea wrote this? <laughs> what time does that clerk say? Oh. <laughs> Good afternoon. Uh, but thank you to Reese Makes Words uh, for that wonderful catchphrase oh. submission. And welcome to the show. This is Comedy Bang Bang. Thank for, you. Uh, and I'm speaking to you, uh, <laughs> of course, personally. And now let me talk to the listeners out there, if I may. Be my guest. Thank you for listening to Comedy Bang Bang for Put another week. Put my manners week. to the test. <laughs> <laughs> All right. By the way, Paul F. Tompkins here has uh, turned into a talking spoon this in the time sucks. between the last this episode. This is not great. <laughs> because, I mean, first of all, the spoon, would you agree that the spoon is the least used item of uh, cutlery? Oh, I wish flatware? I could say that's true. Really? I People are using me to stir and scoop all manner of things. <laughs> But that is primarily a spoon's bailiwick, is it not? Well, yes, but I've never been a spoon before. <laughs> How did this happen to you? Uh, I was doing cocaine with a genie. <laughs> <laughs> Just one of those crazy things. I made guys... fun of his Coke spoon and he uh, turned me into one. Oh, no. Wait, so you're a Coke spoon? I'm a big Coke spoon. Oh, okay. Well, so the when genie you... was very big. When you say all manner of things, you primarily mean cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> Meow. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Did that genie just turn you into a cat? Genie! <laughs> How great was I Dream of Genie? The creators of that realized that uh, the the word genie mm -hmm. was uh, a uh, homonym yeah. for the name genie. Yeah. That's a show. It's perfect. And then... How disappointed were the creators of Bewitched who were like, ah, Bewitch isn't a name. <laughs> no, witch isn't a name. Witch isn't Sorceress a name. Sorceress is not a name. <laughs> But then in I Dream of Genie, and pardon me for anyone who's under 100 years old, <laughs> um, but uh, why was he an astronaut? Like, if you were creating that show, is an astronaut just a man of science, or was it everyone who was... <laughs> a man of science! And so that magical uh, uh, magical being would be... Uh, uh, the, the dichotomy there is interesting. I think you're giving it a lot of credit, and I think it was just because astronauts were popular They were the popular time, in the 60s. Because it was the beginning of the space program, and mm -hmm. yeah, people were very excited. Great show. And also very little, other than the original finding of the genie bottle... How did very they find it? I his, don't recall. Very little of his career had to do with space. He was mostly <laughs> just in the Air Force and worked at an office. <laughs> if He was an astronaut, though, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Did he travel to the moon and beyond? Or I don't remember. If, and back? I don't remember if he traveled to the moon, beyond, and back, or if he, it was a like a, a flight that was aborted. Like, I remember in the an opening mm. animation, his space capsule, mm. it uh, falls down on an island. Oh, that's right. And that's right. where he discovers the bottle. So he's a failed astronaut. Yeah, I guess so. Who never made it out into space, yeah. instead got onto an island. Yeah. Finds instead, a, he got onto an island, <laughs> which anyone could do. You I don't guess, have to be an astronaut to do that. I mean, you know. Uh, in one way, it's an efficient way of travel. If you need to get to that island, True. Go, out, go out into space. and then... But much like the incompetent Gilligan, he did not go there on purpose. That is true. You know, my, uh, my father, who worked in the aerospace uh, industry, uh, told me at one point that he, th he believes that is the next step in uh, uh, travel 
is high speed flights that go up into the atmosphere. They're like rockets mm-hmm. that go up and then they come down uh, after the Earth's rotation rotates a little bit onto uh, wherever you need to go and it'll take a fraction of the time. That's interesting. Yes. Has that come to pass yet? That, uh, I mean, he told me this uh, approximately three years ago. So, <laughs> three years ago? Yes. Wow. So he's still thinking about it. He's still thinking about it. He retired uh, from the industry, and uh, mm. I believe he still keeps up with it. Now a he's bit. a professional poker player. <laughs> That's right. The he only, is all in. I feel like any shows about islands, people go there by mistake. And the only like, lost Gilligan's Island. Right. The only one I can think of where people went there on purpose is Fantasy Island. <laughs> yeah. But come on. Can you think of another show where it's like, watch these characters as they vacation on Hawaii? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's... Hi, Paul. Uh, hi. Welcome to the show. Thank uh, you again. Uh, this is a very special episode. This is Best of Comedy Bang Bang Part One uh, of, of 2018. <laughs> uh, well, uh, Yes, of 2018. Did I say not of? What well, did you I just say? said best, best of comedy, of comedy bang, bang, bang bang. Correct. Which, you're you're right. It could be any year. Maybe I don't, we'll, wanna, I don't want to mislead the audience. Maybe we will do that some uh, year, where uh, perhaps even for the 10th anniversary of do uh, best of of the entire 10 years. Can you? Fu- Scott, can you fucking imagine? Can you fucking imagine? Can you fucking Scott, imagine? Can you fucking, can you imagine? fucking imagine? Can you fucking imagine? Can you fucking imagine? Oh no, the genie turned us into babies. Oh no, baby genie, no baby. No baby genie. No baby baby. Best of twenty. <laughs> Whoa! Did you just cough or was that a laugh? Maybe it was a little bit of both. <laughs> Claff. Claff. Loth. Clost. Um, this is Best of Comedy Bang Bang 2018. Part one of four. Mm. So over the next couple of weeks, uh, today, of course, is Christmas Eve, Monday, and uh, then we'll uh, put out part two on Thursday. The following week, uh, New Year's Eve, part three, Mm -hmm. and then the following Thursday, part four, we will wrap it all up with your top episodes. We are counting down the top 14 this year. Paul, are you excited? The top episodes. I'm very excited, Scott. Mm -hmm. This has been a great year for Comedy Bang Bang. Uh, Yes, it has, and we'll see exactly how many of your episodes make it on on the list. What how many how many do you think might end up there? One. <laughs> Which one? Maybe. I don't know. One that somebody famous is on again. <laughs> Aw, <Aww>, Paul. <laughs> We'll see. We'll see if you're going to uh, be be uh, pleasantly surprised, pleasantly surprised, or, or you will justifiably fly into disappointed. A, <laughs> fly into a rage. I will fly into a rage. Paul F. Smash. I'm just talking about your favorite TV shows. What else? I love Smash. I know you love Smash. I never We're, watched it. Remember how important it was to... You never watched it? I never saw it. That's Why? right up my alley. Instead, I watched... It is right up your alley. I watched the Josh Radner one that came out uh, this year. Well, I don't even know oh, what it was called. He's like a teacher or something? He's a, he's a teacher who's uh, who, who gets so excited about Spring Awakening, the show, that he decides he's going to go in there and oust the drama teacher and, and campaign for her job. And then... Uh, he goes in there and, and starts, uh, you know, to, uh, directing this musical, Spring Awakening. Is that true? That is very true. Wow. I, I, I maybe but he didn't Smash do it. Smash was right up your alley. <laughs> well, I, I, I watched it. it, it uh, of course, R.I.P. is no longer with us, but I, I watched it until Josh I could Radner st- died? stomach it no longer. What's that? Josh Radner died? Josh Radner is dead. <laughs> oh, I hope he doesn't die between the recording and this episode. Uh, <laughs> were you saying R.I.P. for the show? <laughs> I'm praying for Josh Radner <laughs> the same way I pray for the notorious RBJ. Jo- RBJG. JGG. Josh, we're pulling for you. We, we want you to survive. Hang in there. Hang in there, Josh. <laughs> and perhaps your next project will. Uh, One of the, here's, may I entice you to, yes. to seek out Smash and watch it? It's only two seasons. How would one seek it out and then watch it? It's got to be it's gotta streamable be on like an NBC app or something like sure. that. Sure. I only f- watched the first season. Oh, really? So you're telling me to watch two seasons. You only watched one? I'll, I'll watch the second season if you will. Okay. <laughs> in in the same room but or in adjoining rooms? Whatever you want. Oh, two rooms, like Bernie Taupin and uh, Elton John. <laughs> if we're in two rooms watching at the same time. At the exact same time. I used yes. to do that on planes. Uh, occasionally, uh, Akiva Schaffer and I would go take trips together. Uh, and we insisted on... Drinking the same things, Mm -hmm. eating the exact same meal, Mm -hmm. and watching the exact same movie and pressing play at the exact same time. And if we ever paused it, pausing it at the exact same time so we could have the exact experience while wearing headphones. Sure. That's fun. It was a lot of fun. I guess. It's rigid fun. (laughs) Well, listen, Smash, the first season, one of the subplots is 
the the uh, uh, you know D- uh, Deborah Messing is married to Brian. TV's Grace. Yeah, TV's Grace, mm-hmm. and not Grace Under Fire. And the stories of Emily. What was the name of the other show? The Mysteries of Laura. Oh, yes, yes. That's right. <laughs> TV's Grace and Laura. She had uh, two uh, uh, failed shows before just going, I give up. Back go, to the back grind. To Grace. Back to the Grace grind. <laughs> uh, so she's married to Brian Darcy. I almost said Brian Darcy Carden. <laughs> <laughs> but Brian, he's a Broadway actor. Very prominent eyebrows. Mm. Uh, I, I right believe- there, uh, where, whereabouts? In the middle of his head? We kind of like you, like two thirds where, where his eyes are, but uh, like over, yeah, between between his hairline and his eyes, between his ears, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. but the other way, the other way, horizontal. <laughs> you consider ears to be vertical, yes, don't you? <laughs> So what parts of the body are vertical and what parts are horizontal? Scott, you've fallen into my trap. Oh, no. <laughs> ears, Here we go. Ears and nose. Ears and nose vertical. Vertical. Arm, Eyes and mouth, horizontal. Arms and legs, Arms vertical. and legs, vertical. Chest, horizontal. horizontal. The the belly button. It better be horizontal. <laughs> You think a belly button is horizontal? I don't because it's part of the landscape of the belly. I think it's vertical. Then that sounds like an Audi to me. But, uh, belly buttons are not completely circular. I believe they are ovular, and I believe they are vertical. Well, or are they not? They, your, take yours out. You have your beliefs. Here's mine. <laughs> Sorry about the noise. <laughs> that is vertical AF, my friend. Thank you. Nah. Did I win? So, what about penis? Penis, obviously vertical. What about penis? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that course, show, the vajoon, the vajoon, <laughs> vertical. <laughs> unless, unless you know the old urban legend has it. <laughs> what is that? I don't know this. Urban oh, legend. Scott, I'll tell you off mic. Oh boy, oh, boy. let's turn them off right now. Oh, Click. girl. So, you know it? they say that uh, men's vaginas go the other way. <laughs> they go side to side. I think you're talking about. Huh? Think you're talking huh? about? I think you're talking about a butthole. Huh? Think you're talking about a butthole? It's me, Eugene Cordero. <laughs> huh? 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 What's my name? It's me. It's me, Carl Tart. <laughs> huh? <laughs> <laughs> we'll hear a little bit of that later. Let's turn the mics back on. <laughs> Click. <laughs> um. So in Smash, one of the subplots is, uh, you know, Deborah Messing married Deborah to Messing, this dude. She's she's married to this dude. They have a son who's uh oh, is, who's in high school. Hmm. Seems like he's forty years old. <laughs> he was also in the movie Brooklyn with Sheer Sharon. What is Brooklyn again? Is that uh, it's a movie about Brooklyn? Is it the movie where the Irish pe- person comes over? Yes, yeah, the movie where the Irish person comes over with uh, Sheer Sharon. Sheer Sharon. Sheer Sharon. Sheer Sharon. Yes, I did see it. Sheer Sharon. Sheer Sharon. It's so great. That is a movie, by the way, that my mother uh, liked so much she bought on Blu ray. Now, she doesn't have a lot of Blu rays, but that one, ooh. Absolutely. She wanted to watch it again and again. That's right up an old mom's alley. <laughs> <laughs> I promise she has never watched it nor taken it out of no, the package. No, she forgets that she has it. <laughs> um, so, she, uh, you know, Deborah Messing's going to, she's mulling whether or not to go back to work to do write another Smash Broadway So thing. she is a Broadway librettist? She's a Broadway smash maker. Okay. <laughs> yeah, she she works with this other guy, and I think she does the lyrics and he does the music. Okay. I think. So she writes the... Songs that make, make the, the whole world, world sing. sing. Do you have a similar distaste for, not to get too off track, but for the music of the early 70s and mid-70s? No, I don't. Really? You? I mean... I don't. I think because I'm a a little bit older than you. I, I guess I mean those particular, the schmaltzy, elevator-ish, Barry yeah, Manilow-ish. It's, it's, I, I guess like a love-hate thing because there is something that's something that's somewhat comforting about them. I don't right. like them as songs necessarily. What about like uh, uh, the, uh, hey, won't you play another <laughs> yeah. somebody done somebody yeah. wrong song? Make me feel at home while I miss my baby. baby. While I miss my Is baby. Is it while? I'm going to be, make me feel at home while I miss my baby. 
Make me feel at home while I miss my baby. Here's my agenda for today. Missing my baby. <laughs> and someone and making gonna, me feel home. I'm going to be out and about. So if you can make me feel at home while I miss my baby. <laughs> Is he doing errands during doing this song? Solid. Yeah. He's multitasking. <laughs> He's driving all around, uh, picking up prescriptions. He's dropping off a dry cleaning. He's dropping off a dry cleaner. <laughs> oh, Manjone. Oh, uh, Manjone. Why don't you drop off a dry cleaning? <laughs> Chuck Manjone. Ah, uh, Chuck Manjone. Feels so good. Now, that's a great song. What song is that? How's that go? It's a it's an instrumental. Okay. He he was the king of the trumpet instrumentals, was he not? He was the king of the trumpet instrumentals. <laughs> What's another one of his? 1929. The world <laughs> on the brink of disaster. But Chuck Manjone was entertaining everyone into the grave. <laughs> Didn't he do? That I'm, feels so good. Yeah. Oh, is that feel so good? I thought I was doing the Price is Right theme there for a second. There's some overlap. <laughs> There's some overlap. <laughs> that would be a great <laughs> mashup. Oh, Hulk mashup. <laughs> Why isn't there a DJ who wears a big Hulk head? Yes, DJ and the Hulk, Hulk head. <laughs> Hulk mashup. Every song. Every song. God. Why are we giving away this idea? It's true. We it's could true. be the new Daft Punk. We could both be that DJ. Right. I did hear if, if you I, wear a mask. I did hear about Daft Punk that they when they play live or do any sort of uh promotional appearance, be in a video or anything, yes. it is never them. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> it is always just like two random dudes yeah. that they Why hire not? to do this all the time. Why not? Why not? Why not? That's the that's the the advantage of wearing a mask. This is the advantage of wearing a mask. I also heard Mike Myers on Halloween when he kills all those people. Not him. Hmm. It's just someone he hires. He kills some of the people. No, he's never killed anyone, and he's oh. gone to insane asylums for it. He l just will keep that secret to the grave. I've heard that, and this is timely. If you see Santa Claus in mm -hmm. the department store, sure, it's one of his helpers. Really? Yeah, it's not really him. So if you tug on his beard mm -hmm. and you see it's fake, mm -hmm. he'll tell you that he's one of his helpers yeah. instead of the actual Santa Claus. He has to tell you that. Oh man, yeah. is that like uh, even if his beard is real? Being a member of Kiss, they've ne they have not toured since the seventies. Why? Because they, they, it's, they've just put other people into those, uh, into the into the makeup. Oh, I thought it's because their music is dumb and no one wanted to hear it. <laughs> How dare you? How dare me? How dare me? <laughs> Tell me about Deborah. <laughs> With Messing. science. So they have this son. She's like, I'm gonna have to go back to work. I think. And he's forty. And, and then the son is very. He's very upset because they had been mulling uh, adopting a child. The son is upset. This. Because they were the high school son is furious that now the the plans to adopt a second child are on hold. <laughs> Why would the son care? Exactly. The son who's in high it's not like, oh, I've always wanted a little brother. Yeah. No, I'm, exactly. I'm three years old and I've Ex always wanted a little or exactly. even up to five. Yeah. Uh maybe. So up to imagine six. imagine this kid. Who sounds like a full, like a middle-aged man saying, "17-year-old." Why well, I thought you were gonna get me a baby sister? What happened? <laughs> hey, uh, well, Deborah. I was gonna. Hey, Deb. Hey, Deb. Hey, Deb. <laughs> well, Deb, Deb, Deb. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Sit down a second. Let's talk. <laughs> hey, you remember we had discussed this? You said you were gonna give me a baby brother, baby sister. We were gonna do it as a family. <laughs> we agreed. Now I got trigonometry in the morning. You think I want to deal with this shit? So that passed through network notes and and made it all the way onto TV. It was a running subplot that this for was almost motivation. the entirety of the season. <laughs> yes, that that was one of the things that made her life difficult. Was that her son, her son was mad? Her son was mad that the adoption plans were on hold. This sounds great. I got to watch it now. You should watch it. There, there's a lot about it that's extremely insane. There's fake a, musical or real musical. What are the? She's writing a new musical. Is that what it is? She's writing a new musical. About uh, adoption it's called Bombshell. It's oh. not about adoption. That probably would have appeased the sun a little bit. Oh wait, is it about Marilyn Monroe? Yes, it is about. Oh, Marilyn okay. Monroe. The the most <laughs> a topic we've uh, hardly talked about. <laughs> we barely scratched the surface. Why do people like Marilyn Monroe? I've tried to figure this out. I mean, she yeah, she was uh, she was in a few movies, and she I like her in some like it hot. That's mm. maybe the only. No, I've seen Seven Year Itch. Didn't like her in that, but but. <laughs> Was it just because- How to Marry a Millionaire? You ever see her in that? I have not. She's very good. She's very good. Okay, but so she made like a random three movies. Yes. Is it just the she, poster? She made, <laughs> she made a random three movies. 
three movies. That seems like about all she did. That was her she, body of work. No, right? she had she she made quite a few movies, and she's actually I I know exactly what you mean because I'm not terribly familiar with her. And then recently, uh, uh, Janie was watching um, How to Marry a Millionaire. Okay, and is that the one? Yeah, with Lauren Bacall and Betty Grable. Okay, and um, and I started watching it with her, and she's un Marilyn Monroe's undeniably charming and attractive like you cannot help but like her and fall in love with her okay you know uh, i given, mean given she was but a movie it, star but but she was a movie star sure but i'm i guess what i mean to say is is what is this fascination 50 years on with her you know it's like you know no one is going to be writing a musical in 50 years about shersha ronan well scott she had a troubled life she had, okay she so did shersha she can't did she, she i don't right? know she okay <laughs> Or, or okay, let me what give you she, a different 20 example. Twenty years old, <laughs> writing a musical about Josh Radner, R.I.P. I know. Well, a little too soon. I think we have to yeah. wait and <laughs> look at his whole legend. <laughs> did Marilyn Monroe drown? She's not drown. <laughs> what did she? Uh, uh, well, there's what did some she do? Con some conjecture. Car crash? What was? Not it? a car crash. It was uh, uh, supposedly an overdose of pills. Okay, but leading to her drowning she, in a car. She did not drown in a car. <laughs> She just in a bed, really? Just like, or on a toilet, Elvis style? I or believe what? in a bed. In a bed. I believe okay, in a bed. Okay, good, good. I, people should I mean, die. I don't know. People should die in beds. It always bums people me out. People should die in beds. It always bums me out, like, hearing about people who come into their house and find their loved one, like, on a floor. I think that's why the grandparents in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory stayed in bed the Always stayed in bed because they know they're, they're like, just about yeah, to go. we're so old. What are we doing? We're going to walk around? <laughs> uh, what, I'm going to drop dead at the store? Get me a bedpan. Get I don't want to die on the toilet like Elvis Presley. Pan. I want to have some dignity. Get me a bedpan. Did Jim Morrison also, and I, I apologize, this is a, uh, a quite a morbid topic, but a bathtub for him? I believe bathtub for, bathtub for you. <laughs> <laughs> no toilet for you? No toilet for you. The toilet Nazi would not let him die on the toilet. <laughs> Big Seinfeld fan, Paul. Oh boy, what holds up better? <laughs> there is something that's very when I think of Seinfeld, like I watched it when it was on and sure. really enjoyed it. As when I. I think of it now, it seems like a very cold and remote thing to me that I do not want to revisit. I bet at it. All. I bet it still holds up. I have not. For watched. a lot of people, it does. I bet it does. People like to celebrate Festivus. <laughs> now it's time for the a area festival of for the rest of us. A Festivus for the rest of us. Uh, speaking of uh, the holidays, though, today is Christmas Eve. Do you have Christmas plans? Nope. Just gonna cool. see what happens. <laughs> Just gonna wake up. Hope ah. that old fat man traveled down ah. my chimney. Ah. If not. See you next year. Yeah, if I don't get presents from Santa Claus this year, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm keeping it open. Just keeping your options open. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because well, if I do get presents, okay. If I do get presents, of course, I'm going to spend all day opening them. <laughs> of course. How many presents do you usually get from Santa? Who? It's in the high hundreds. High hundreds? Yeah. 950 or so? Okay, yes. Oh, my gosh. 951. <laughs> Santa gives you that many, and are they all small presents that cost like a dollar? No, it's a wide variety. It's a wide array. Uh, sometimes I get multiple bikes. Multiple bikes? I got a swimming pool slide once. Do you have a swimming pool? Nope. Hoping where this did, year. Where did, Santa's going to bring you a swimming pool? I hope so. Why so, not? What would that what, be? That's beyond his powers? You would. How would that work? You would go into your backyard, see a giant hole in the ground with wrapping paper? Yeah, a big bow. <laughs> Like a boat, like a car, like a brand new car bow, but even bigger. Just don't step into it because I fear you would plunge right through the paper and somebody I hurt can't your remember, little butt. I can't remember who it was. Somebody on Twitter and I retweeted it. Like, like talked about the how. I guess there's this world out there where people are getting new cars for Christmas all the time. A whole new world. Don't you dare shut the door. A whole new world. I'm gonna kick you in the face. Uh, I gave Cool Up a new car once. No, put, that's very put a nice. nice little bow on. Did you do it. a Didn't little bow? Yeah, well, it was little. I couldn't get. I couldn't find one of those big car <laughs> Did ones. Did you do one of the regular bows like you put it? <laughs> it back? was in the grill. I put it in the grill. <laughs> But like the, the the one that you would put on yeah, a wrapped yeah. present. Just, yeah, okay. exactly. 
But these commercials every year. Every year, people are getting new cars. Jesus Christ. When's a, you you have a newish car, right? Your how old is yours? Yours 2011. Is, 2011. Yeah. Very good. Mine is uh tw- 2008. 2008 and still ha- only 50 50,000 miles. Why trade it in? Mine has 30 miles on it. 30. Yeah. So you don't drive it here or I don't drive it here. <laughs> Where do you I take a limousine here? What I do is I <laughs> I drive it back and forth in the driveway <laughs> just to feel some freedom. Just to feel powerful like a yeah. man. Well, you know, because I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I have security detail that protects sure. me at all times. They, they'll never let me drive around town. Of course. I noticed them tasting your food as well. Uh, they're not supposed to be doing that. They're just eating my food. <laughs> oh, no. Sorry, guys. And I didn't mean you to for, blow up your spot. Thank you for telling me. Oh, no. You're not going to fire them. Not I'm, on Christmas Eve, I'm Paul. I'm going to fire them on Christmas Day. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Old man Tompkins. So they have to tell their families. To look around the table and say, I just got a text message. I'm fired. <laughs> By text? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, you're not going to go to their house on Christmas Day. Of no, course how, how can I get there? My security detail is uh, all with their family. You've given them the day off, though. That's yeah, nice. to get fired. <laughs> I would love that. If, like, it was like Ebenezer Scrooge, that was his move, where he's like, Bob Cratchit, sure, take Christmas Day off. Go ahead. And you know what, Bob te- Cratchit? You're right. You're right. You, you should take Christmas you should have Day, the day off. off. And then text him, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> and then a sad emoji. What's this? A gift for Mr. Scrooge? A, a mobile telephone? <laughs> so let he me gives just, him the let phone. Let me just set it up. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, that's, I mean, that's the way to do it. You get somebody a brand new phone. Just to text them you're fired. Just to text <laughs> <laughs> Power move. I love it. Power move. Power bottom. I mean, Andrew Scrooge. <laughs> Famous power buff. Famous. <laughs> Ebenezer Scrooge. <laughs> the rankings of Dickens' characters. <laughs> okay, you got Oliver Twist. Oliver Twist is top for sure. <laughs> Definitely. Please, Dave, I want some more. You know what I mean? David Topperfield. <laughs> it's right there in the <laughs> it name. Don't get toppier than that. <laughs> But famous power <laughs> bottom. Famous power bottom. <laughs> Ebenezer Scrooge. <laughs> J.D. Power Bottom and Associates have ranked Ebenezer Scrooge. <laughs> Notorious power bottom. Hey, is it cold in here because it's Christmas time? I are it, you cold or are you warm? I'm not cold. I'm okay. I'm, I'm okay. I'm gonna tough it out. I'm you, gonna tough it out. You have a jacket. Do you know what it is? I have a jacket. I have a vest. Uh huh. I feel it on my bicep. You feel the chill I feel of the Christmas chill on, on my bicepuals. <laughs> those, by the way, flex those bad boys for me. <laughs> sure, oh, you welcome know. to the gun show. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> We've got fun and games. How many times have you flexed in your? life three <laughs> and what were the occasions uh both were i think two times were jokes <laughs> one time was, was just, just to check it out and like, see what, what it looked like what would it look like yeah <laughs> i just wanted to see it in the light jim morrison <laughs> r.i.p bathtub all no right R. 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 <laughs> what is r.i.b all right bathtub all right rested bathtub <laughs> uh paul yes we got to get to the best episodes of the year we got to get to them this is exciting we're uh gonna count down your top 14 episodes that your top 14 that's right it's not this is on top, you i would i would rank them quite differently oh my god I, 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 me. scott i wish one year we would reveal our rankings <laughs> that it, would, it would be blow fun people's minds and i would just say like okay for me what would it be like the ones that we enjoyed the most like critically uh, uh with our critical faculties we think are the best or is it the ones we enjoyed doing the most it's the, fucking, it's the one i'm in scott you would just list all of yours of course what other list is there the list is life. The list is life. <laughs> the list is life. The list is life. Another great holiday movie. I love it. Because at the list. end, there's red. <laughs> yeah. Well, in the middle. Is there red in the yeah, middle? I believe uh, she walks around in the middle of the movie. Oh, really? The yeah, I, yeah. I've, for some reason in my memory, it's just at the end. I believe it's the uh, halfway point of the movie. She's just, just like running around there, uh, uh, glamming it up in red oh, in she- the middle. She who was is she again? a real diva. I haven't seen it in 20 odd years. Who is uh, she? She grew up to be Golda Meir. Really? Yes. Incredible. Incredible. Um, who was she? I think she was just a little girl. Just a little girl. A little girl around. blissfully unaware of the horror around her. <laughs> Well, uh, as are we during this holiday season, mm-hmm. because sure. uh, we are here to entertain you and we're here to count down your top 14 episodes. These are episodes that you uh, voted on uh, every year right after Thanksgiving. 
Uh, we put up the American holiday. The American holiday. We put up the voting uh, best of, for the best of. So it goes from Thanksgiving to Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. We're not Fair. technically 2018. It's yeah. uh, late 2017 to late 2018. But it's but this is released in 2018. You get the idea. You get the idea. I need time to tabulate the votes. I need time I need to, to tabulate, tabulate the votes. The votes. <laughs> <laughs> I need I need time to uh, make the edits, which is a three or four day process for me. Time to make the edits. Time to make the edits. That's a Christmas tradition for me. Yeah. Out there on Christmas Eve, just making the edits, <laughs> listening to 14 episodes of my show. Now, one time you fell asleep and some elves made the edits. They did. I woke up and I was like, these edits are not good. No. They're they, made by tiny hands. They're made with tiny, tiny hands with tiny scissors. What's going on with your levels there? You well, I was to- turning up the wrong box. I wanted to hear myself a little bit You better. want to hear yourself more. Now, do these, we're in, we're in a new Can studio. Can we turn up each other or down each other? Or it's just purely just the- Can we uh, do upvoting and downvoting? Can we do upvoting and downvoting? That is my question. Sam, please don't get on mic. One uh, of my favorite things on Reddit is that the categories of comments- that? One of the, you know, you can you can view them. Uh, oh, I did an AMA on there. Old, once. new, an A N A. A M A. Oh, ask me anything. Yeah, that's what it stands for, right? I did an American Medical Medical Association. <laughs> so this is a website that you. This is a website that you can go on. Okay, but so in in a comment in a thread, you you'll see the comments and you can you can view them by different categories. You can view them by old, by new, and my favorite is. Best. Best. <laughs> who's who's deciding who the what the best comments are? What if there was someone on the internet who was just like wandering around and judging every comment on yeah. everything and just the wandering Jew. <laughs> <laughs> he wanders the earth judging comments. What is the story of the wandering uh, I don't even want to say it. I don't know. Like he It's a holiday uh, thing though, right? Isn't it? I don't think it's a holiday thing. Oh, okay. I, I think it's just like a legend and it's like he denied our Lord. <laughs> oh, okay, and he's forced to wander the earth, he's like wander uh, around, and then they throughout they, time immemorial. Yeah, and mm-hmm. then they named a plant after him. They did which plant? The wandering Jew. That's a plant. Yeah, there's a plant called. People wandering call Jew. a plant yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That seems like it should be changed in 2018, at least 2019. <laughs> What's the plant look like? I don't know. I'm gonna look it up. Okay, yeah. Why don't look you at, tell look. tell the people more things? Okay, uh, we are going to be going through the episodes uh, from 14 down to one. So we're not going to start at one and not going to start with the best. We're going to start with the worst of the 14. Uh, I believe we put out about 60 episodes this year, and we got over 35,000 votes. 35,000 votes. I looked up the Wandering Jew, the guy, okay. and it's quite something. It really? What, what yeah. do you have to tell us about this? Do you want, do you want to continue with this, and then I'll, we'll come back to it? We'll come, let's come to, back to it. Okay. Yeah, we have uh, over 35,000 votes. And uh, we put out about 60 episodes. We're going to play you approximately a quarter of them. Uh, the top 14, you're chuckling to yourself about it's, this guy. The idea of it is ridiculous. All right, just hit us with this. All right. <laughs> what do we got? The Wandering Jew is a mythical immortal man whose legend began to spread in Europe in the 13th century. The original legend concerns a Jew who taunted Jesus on the way to the crucifixion. On the way? And was then cursed to walk the earth until the second coming. Cursed by whom? That sounds mean. I mean, presumably Jesus. That sounds like a mean thing to do. Jesus did one time get mad at a fig tree for not having figs. Okay. And he made it die. Okay, but it's not a sentient, unless it's some sort of Groot situation. It was not Groot. It was not Groot. Yeah. Okay, but you'll know Groot. By the Trail of Dead. <laughs> <laughs> but this, okay, let, let's- This is a guy, so Jesus is dragging his cross to be crucified on but, it. That's, but, by the way, that's fucking brutal. Yeah. Like, we're gonna, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna we're crucify gonna kill you. you. But you All gotta, the way over there. <laughs> <laughs> and you gotta hoof it. You gotta drag this thing up there. It's part of the indignity of crucifixion. Yeah. But I guess what I mean to ask is, if this is a story concocted by Christians and followers of Christ- mm-hmm. It's not a good look, Jesus. No, but doesn't say that Jesus did it. It could be yeah, that just who's like cursing. As who, a result, who else has the power of curses? As a result of is this, it that, ha- that gypsy and well, thinner. Of course, of course God. Thina. Thina. Wander. <laughs> <laughs> so you, it's it's Jesus's dad. God. Yeah, I guess so. Jeez. I guess so. This is okay, but that's what I mean to say is, is if you're on the side of Jesus. 
It's, which I which I am. Okay, just well, I want that out there. I want that out there. I am on the side of Jesus. It's not a good look on Jesus. No, it's not. And if you're on the other side, I, I it must be uh, a Jewish myth. Like these Christians, they cursed our people. It's an interesting it? take. That's <laughs> Don't you an think? interesting take. Here's how bad. <laughs> here's how bad these Christians are. They cursed one of us. They cursed one of us to wander <laughs> With their forever magic powers. until Jesus comes back from, you know. Also, also, if you are Jewish and you think that Jesus has the power to curse people. There we go. Then he must be the son of God. Exactly. Then why are you Jewish? Why are you Jew? <laughs> <laughs> but I love the idea of like, <laughs> so you're, so Jesus is carrying the cross, right? Mm-hmm. And then there's Ouch. like this, this guy on the sidelines going, ha ha, Jesus. Look at you. You can barely carry that thing. You look stupid. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then this guy's cursed. Just cursed. Just to wander around. And he can't even buy a home? I don't know. I guess it's that after a while, people begin to talk like, hey, how come you haven't aged? I guess if, okay, so there's been- Are you the wandering Jew? There's been two uh, a little over 2,000 years since- uh, Jesus died <laughs> mm-hmm. since 33 AD. <laughs> yeah. Seems like yesterday. <laughs> um, and uh, we're not going to get into that uh, argument again no, about whether it's I 33 or I whether. Didn't think of it. Um, but, uh, 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 and then approximately what, a thousand years before that w- when the earth was created? Yeah. So, but in 2000 years, do you think you could get to every place? He's probably on foot. In 2000 years, yes. So in 2000 years, you, you could. could just, you could cover the entire globe. How are you going oh, to get to- Oh, especially when air travel comes along. How are you going to get to those islands? Are you well, going to become an astronaut? Not on purpose. I mean, you end up on those islands. What if Larry Hagman was the wandering Jew? <laughs> oh my God. That's why I got the liver transplant. <laughs> <laughs> there are many species of plants named wandering Jew, by the okay, way. Okay. Do you, oh, there are? Yes. Like it's so, it's such a there's popular th- name. There's three that are known as a wandering Jew. There's, there's- uh, and then there's four, there's three plants and four day flowers, which I've never heard what of. What are day flowers? They're like vampire flowers that can survive during the day. A lot of botanists out there screaming at their podcast machines. And then at the end, other plants known as wandering Jew include two more. Wow. People what? really wanted to name plants wandering Jew. Why? This I is don't bizarre. Know. I don't know. Just call it some. How many plants are named Rumpelstiltskin? <laughs> None. <laughs> And yet, we'll name a plant after this slur. We'll name eight plants after it. I don't know. Um, all right, we need to get to our uh, uh, first clip of the day. If you say. This is number 14. Number one, four. All right, clip number 14. This is from episode 558. By the way, today on today's episode, we are going to be going through 14, 13, 12, and 11. 14, 13, 12, 12 and 11. 11. 14, 13, 12, and 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 11. Then the rest of them. Uh, this is episode 558. Which episode do you think this is? Did this you memorize the all the numbers? Of course I did. Of course I did. This is, what was the most recent episode that just aired? The one that just aired was, uh, I can look that up. It would have been 579. Yeah, so that would put this one squarely in earlier. (laughs) Yes, it is earlier than the recent one that is not eligible. This is the one with Ricky Martin and Pol Pot? (laughs) You wouldn't think those two would have a lot in common. But but. they really hit it off. (laughs) Uh, This is an episode called Ship of Love. Ship? Shove. Shove. Yes. For short. For short. Shove. Yeah. Yes. This is the episode where everyone just shoved each other the entire time. <laughs> it was made for bad audio, but great podcasting. Um, no, this is an episode called Ship of Love with Casey Wilson, mm. Drew Tarver, mm-hmm. and Zach Oyama. Okay. Okay. D- don't remember it? Not ringing I, any bells? I think I do. And I think that Drew Tarver plays a guy who sings a bunch of songs. Drew Tarver, yes, plays a guy who bunch uh, who who bunch of sings a he bunch of sings a he, he bunch of sings a I bunch of sings a. By the way, we just got uh, kettle glazed donuts delivered to us and some uh, cookies and some cookies by Colin. Thank you so much. Cookies uh, by Colin. He made these. He made these. They're yeah. wrapped in plastic, just like Laura Palmer. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we'll dig into those while we listen to the clip. Um, this is an episode called Ship of Love. Now, let me uh, give you a little backstory about this. Um, I had uh, Casey Wilson, a good dear friend of mine, uh, on the show. Good and dear? 
good dear friend of mine. Damn. Uh, where we talked a little bit before the clip that you'll hear, we talked a little bit about her Oscar parties and how obnoxious I am during them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then uh, Drew Tarver, our good friend, uh, he came in as a character called Martin Sheffield Lickley. That's right. Martin Sheffield Lickley. Martin so, Sheffield Lickley. Lickley. Martin, Martin Sheffield, Sheffield Lickley. Lickley. Now, if you're listening to the clip, you also can eat uh, cookies. While That's you true. Listen, while you listen to this That's clip. That's very true. So that'll be enjoyable for but you. But only cookies. Oh, only cookies. No savory. Don't take any medications. Nope. No pot roasts. No. You can't eat a fucking Yorkshire pudding. <laughs> uh, let's listen to the clip. This is your number 14. Number one, four. All right, this is exciting. He's an entertainer, and uh, he's about to come out here. He's an 80s new wave singer. Please welcome Martin Sheffield Lickley. Hello. How are you guys? Good. How are we doing? They say love is but a game And it's only played by fools But like in a game there are winners and losers But who makes up the rules? Thank you, thank you <laughs> Hello uh- Hi. <laughs> good now, evening, my darling lovelies. Good at, well, afternoon. <laughs> well, good afternoon. I guess England, England, maybe it's evening. Yes, I always stay on my local time. It's the afternoon. Welcome to the show, Martin Sheffield Lickley. Martin was- Sheffield Lickley. I'm the lead singer of the 80s new wave band 2 plus 2 equals love. <laughs> oh, okay. A lot of guests don't have uh, entrance music. but Yes, uh, no, thank you. Thank you, you so you much. You started I- singing a song and then you stopped very abruptly. <laughs> I stopped very quickly. Uh, that was the end of that song. Um, but yeah. Are you from was... the southern England? Uh... Yeah, down <laughs> south. Uh, there's a little bit of a draw. But definitely England. I am from Wilkinshire, Dirtshire, Flat Groundshire. <laughs> Oh, okay. I haven't been to that area of England. It sounds beautiful. It's gorgeous. It's seven, in my town, seven people and 4,000 sheep. Oh, yes. that, what a ratio. Yes, yes. Wow, that's like a, a ratio on Twitter of, uh, you know, likes to retweets. It's exactly like that, Scott. Yeah, yes. this is Casey Wilson, by the way. Hello, Hello. Casey. Hi. How we doing tonight? Such a pleasure to meet you. Very nice to meet you Casey's as well. Casey's a singer uh, as well. Uh, a dabble. Oh, have, have really? you ever heard of the band 2 Plus 2 Equals Love? It's I so don't... funny. I hadn't. You hadn't. Neither have I. I, uh, I don't remember them, and I'm an aficionado of 80s music. Yeah, no, we, um, you know, we didn't quite take off like, you know, Flock of Seagulls or Duran. Oh, that's a pun. I, I enjoy that. Yeah, you like that. Or Try to work, do another pun for each band. We didn't you're gonna... run quite as fast as Duran Duran. <laughs> good. <laughs> you know? <laughs> really good. All right, what else you got in the tank? And I didn't grow qu- quite as short as Little Boy George. <laughs> <laughs> that one fell oh, apart. Uh, yeah, well, especially since his uh, name his wasn't name Little not... Boy George. It wasn't. Well, he's just, Peep just and, boy and boy Little George. Boy George. Yeah, yeah well, the, you know. the sheep uh, motif is getting to you. Well, yeah. I mean, I think uh, you know, my two plus two equals love. You know, I've always been a fan of love. Hmm. Um, I know. guess we all are. Yeah. Um, but when I was younger, you know, my little black book. Well, let's just say it wasn't quite so little. <laughs> you know what I mean? Was it just black book like Boy George? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was uh, boy, uh, black book and little boy George. Why am I asking? How mm. old are you? It seems it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you gauge. so much. Well, you could be four years old. You could be a hundred. Great. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, you know, I I I don't like to say my age, you know, but I look young. Very. You can tell. I I look, you know, I I have the look of a cold tan bird. <laughs> Yeah, a, does real, that, does that, a bird that's, that's just freezing, freezing but to death. tan yeah. has been to the beach, but is now cold. Maybe Fetherless. has come back up north uh, <laughs> yes. for the summer, but it's a, a an early chill has exactly, yeah. exactly. You know, my life has been very fantastic. You know, until oh, I hadn't asked, but that's <laughs> very interesting. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, has your life been fantastic? It's been fan. You know, I've been singing, but everything turned on its head last year when oh. my wife was diagnosed with breast cancer. Oh, I'm a, so sorry. Yes, this, it was a, oh. it was a she, terrifying. How is she doing? Is she? It was a terrifying experience. Um, hmm. But ultimately, it brought her brought us closer together, and that's 
when I wrote this next song about it. What? Hit it. Oh. <laughs> All aboard the ship of love. We're going full speed ahead. Toot, toot. The ocean is full of broken hearts. And the captain is a kiss. Ship of love, full of tender hugs. I must steer the course right to the island of love. There are pineapples and crabs there. But I cannot eat them because I am too heartbroken today. It's the ship, it's the ship, the ship of love. I drive the ship, drive the ship, the ship of love. Look out for rocks, big scary rocks. The rocks are metaphors for my broken heart. Thank you. Oh wow. Thank wow. you. Thank you. That's amazing. Thank you. My wife didn't make it, and I sang that at her funeral. Whoa. How was it, uh, how was it received? Um, tepidly. Yeah, um, I can people imagine. People weren't expecting. A little upbeat a, for a funeral. A little upbeat, um, but, you know, I take inspiration, and out comes that new wave sound. Yeah, the sound I've noticed that ABC <laughs> used for their song, Look of Love. <laughs> oh, <laughs> And I'm it's the exact familiar. same backing track as yeah, the first song I, you said. I was going to ask about that. Really? <laughs> but I don't hear that at all. <laughs> okay, there's maybe some <laughs> subtle differences. Yeah, there's some subtle differences. I mean, you know, we were all, you know, taking from each other in that time period. You know. How so? You know, just learning from one another. Was anyone Little boy George would he, <laughs> sit in on my sessions, and Duran Duran would, you know, uh, run, they, from, run your from my sessions. Mm. Um, but yeah, you know, it's uh, my life has been filled with tragedy and Again, turmoil. Again, I did not ask. <laughs> Thank you for asking. I'm so sorry about your wife. What it's else terrible. is going how on? Long, yeah, how long were yeah. you together? Oh, we were together for 30 years. I'm so sorry. I'm so That's sorry. Really, really devastating, you yeah. know. And, wow. Um, That's terrible. I, have you bounced back? This was last year. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, I was I was feeling a little better until my Are, I lost my son. No. Yes. You lost your son as well. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh! What oh happened God. there? This is terrible. This next one's for you, Simon. Oh, what? <laughs> You've been arrested by the love police for the crime of breaking my heart. Chair of love. Ooh, thank you. Oh, thank wow. you. Wow, that is quite a tribute. Thank you. That song is about my dead son. Yeah, you never even mentioned him as far as I can really. Wow, that was really so abrupt. Like maybe obliquely. Well, yeah, you know, songwriting is all about imagery and you know not mm. being too literal. Yeah, Scott. it's. Uh, I gotta say, it it's, was not literal. It's not really a tears in heaven, uh, tearjerker style. Well, you song. know, my son, uh, you know, he died of emphysema. <laughs> So he didn't fall out a window, so it's, no, it's a different, different. situation? No, it's different. You know, I would love to write Tears in Heaven, but my son died differently. Did, did you, you know? sing that at his funeral? I did. And um, it was it was not received well. No. Um, I can imagine. But, and was well, this on the heels of your wife's? Right on the heels. <laughs> and when you say that, how do you mean? Well... Was it a double my funeral? My son... Uh, Yes, it was a double funeral. Uh, it saved us a little bit of money. Um, okay, well, I mean, so I guess I the, the chilled silver lining. My, I chilled my wife for about a month. <laughs> you put her on ice. Oh, wait, so it wasn't like a couple days within a couple of days. It wasn't no. like a, a Carrie Fisher, Debbie Reynolds. It was no, a no, month no. apart? A month apart. And I How said, did you know your son was dying of emphysema a month later? <laughs> Great question. Was he suffering, perhaps? He was suffering. He's you just coughing. thought it might go that way. 
yeah, I was headed. Uh, the doctors oh. were like, it's not looking good. And, you know, it was it was just tough. Um, yeah, I can imagine. So I went ahead and combined the funerals. Yeah. Well, yeah. how much did you save? $30. <laughs> oh, 14 quid. Oh, okay. It was 14 thank, quid. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, of course, of course. Well, um, that's, uh, I mean. It's a lot of tragedy. It's a yeah, lot. it's tough. I mean, I wear this suit to commemorate my son. As you can see, there's sort of a cool uh, paint splatter on it, but that's actually blood from my son's coughs. Oh. <laughs> Um, that's terrible. And I'm so That's a lot, by the <laughs> way. That's a hefty amount. Yes, it's a lot. He had emphysema, which is typically a disease that uh, people have after smoking for years. I was going to say, but I got, you know, I'm sure that anyone can get emphysema. Yeah, anybody Or, or did your son die of he was a smoker. from smoking? He was. I told him not to. You know, he saw that kid who smokes on YouTube, the little baby boy. <laughs> Have you seen it? Yes. You've seen it. He puffs seen. on those ciggies. I haven't seen it. And my son saw it, and he couldn't stop himself. I said, don't watch that video. That kid's going to be sick soon. You and saw he, it down the road. It I seems. saw it. Yeah. I saw it all, you know? Wow. Um, but yeah, I just, you know, I've got a big summer tour planned. You do. Well, I so, do. Is, so does Casey with Bitch, Bitch Yeah. Cash. Oh, yes. fantastic. I'd love to come Maybe to yours. Maybe you'll be playing you... the same uh, uh, venues. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm doing a 16 cemetery tour. Cemetery? Uh, yes. I go to cemeteries and I sing songs to the people I've lost. Um, Wait, you've lost people in audience? 16 cemeteries? Well, I know at least one person in every cemetery in America and the United Kingdom. That's a lot of cemetery science. My yeah. life has been plagued with tragedy, Scott. I, I mean, mean, we've I'm, only been talking about the people close to you just one year no, ago. No, I lost my postman this morning. What? Oh, wow. Yes. I walked outside, and I saw him, um, and then uh, uh, hours later, I found out that I'd lost him. I'd known him for 16 years. Really? How yeah. did you find so out? I'm sorry. Oh, I saw it on the news. Postman mails himself to the bottom of the ocean. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> What a terrible way to go. Oh, my God. It was an accident. It was a, it was a horrible accident. Was it like an envelope accident? Just yeah, typical mix-up. Just a mix-up. Yeah, a mix in up. the post mix office, up. just he got wrapped up. And he took then... a nap, got boxed up, oh, bottom of the ocean. Terrible. I know. They terrible. delivered just a few him hours. the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> that's, a, that's a pretty uh, swift uh, time to get that on the air, it's by the way. It's just so much for you to go through. It's so much, you know, it's tough. My life is, has been plagued with tragedy, but... I met someone recently who turned everything around. Oh, well, you're turning swords into plowshares. That's uh, mm -hmm. wonderful, wonderful yes. of you. I yes. mean, a new love can be truly the uh, cure to what ails you. Yes. Absolutely, and his name is Jesus Christ. Oh, okay. okay. Huh. Huh. <laughs> I uh, met him, and he came into my heart and saved me. Uh-oh. And I've never felt better, so I've decided to dedicate all of my music to my Lord and Savior, okay. Jesus Christ. Huh. Don't tell me you have a song. Yes, this next song is called Jesus is My One True Savior. Oh, no. <laughs> Welcome to the Love Casino. Where I bet my heart on black <laughs> I've hit the jackpot of breaking hearts And I'm a high roller when it comes to kissing <laughs> We play love poker And the dealer is my broken heart The chips we play with are memories of love You have to count cards In order to win the game Because just like love Love poker isn't fair at all it's the casino, it's the casino, the love casino, roll the dice, it feels nice, the love casino, play the slots, their love slots, at the love casino, my son's dead, thank okay, you. Okay, alright. Number one, four. Mmm. Mmm, the pudding. Mmm, mm, the pudding, oh, the cookies. That was, uh, of course, Ship of Love, Drew Tarver as Martin Sheffield Lickley. From two plus two equals love. Uh, <laughs> what I do, did Zach play then again? You Zach, Zach, a little later uh, after the, this clip, a little later in the episode, Zach Oyama, uh, who uh, was on twice this year, he did his first two episodes. He's great. He's really funny. 
He did. Uh, he comes up a little later and plays credit card points expert Chase Barnes. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> This is really funny. Um, Let me say without food in my mouth, Zach is very funny. Yes. Um, just so an unequivocal non-food yes, in that, mouth that compliment seemed, from Paul F. Tompkins. Before. No, no, you're funny. No, funny. Bring me more cookies. <laughs> I should also say those songs uh, were co-written with Brad Evans and Nick Ciarelli mm-hmm. uh, that Drew works with yeah. uh, quite often. I believe he may have uh, written the songs that he did um, about the McDonald's cups and everything that he did on our Atlanta. Donnie Gary. Donnie Gary, I believe he yeah. co-wrote the songs with uh, those two guys as well. Big shout out to them. Um, and that was a funny clip, right? That's a good way to start. I think so, yeah. I mean, I'm not defensive or anything. You seem defensive about this. <laughs> uh, no, I love that clip. That was a really fun episode to do. Um, three great people. Go and check out the entire episode if you like. All right, we have to get to a break. <laughs> Um, when we come back, we are going to be uh, playing your number 13 episode. Now, do, you, do you get the pattern, idiots? <laughs> we sung about it before. Oh 14, 13, 12, 11. 14, 12, 11. Can I, 14, say, 13, yes, 12, 12, 11. Can I say that I hate the audience? I think they're dumb. No. And they don't get things. No. What? <laughs> At Christmas, you tell the truth. <laughs> that, who, who said that? At Christmas, you tell the truth like it was a thing? Yeah, that crazy person, the crazy man with the signs. In what Love Actually. In Love Actually. Oh, yeah, the right. Yeah, guy, the guy that was in love with his best friend's wife. And he just says it in the movie, like, at Christmas you tell the truth. Yeah. Like, this is a thing we've all agreed on. Yes. Stupid. Now, I can't remember if it was a reference to something that was said earlier in that movie, but I also don't care. <laughs> I do not care to watch it again yeah. in order yeah, yeah. to find out. I'm I'm happy to be wrong about it and still feel the way that I feel. <laughs> All right. Well, one thing that we are not wrong about is the order in which we are going to be doing these clips. When we come back Fucking after this, segue. we will have number 13 with Comedy Bang Bang. Best of 2018. <laughs> hey, everyone. Are you not getting enough rest on your bed so you can't dream? Well, that's a problem because if you don't have dreams, you're not going to be able to turn those into a reality with Squarespace. That's right, Squarespace, turning dreams into realities. Squarespace makes it easier than ever to launch your passion project, whatever it is. They don't care. They li- they really do not care. They are so apathetic about your passion project, just the content of it. Like they, what they're very passionate about is turning that into a reality. But well, you know, they don't care what it is. This is. They don't care. Maybe you want to start a new business. They don't care if you want to publish content, sell products more. They don't care. Squarespace is the tool for you, whatever it is. Because listen to this. They got those world class designers. Working on those templates day and night? How many templates have you created in your pitiful life? Zero, I bet. If even one, that's not as many as these guys have created. All you got to do is just with a few clicks, you can easily use those templates and make a beautiful website yourself. Squarespace has powerful e-commerce functionality, lets you sell anything online, and analytics, they help you grow your site in real time. Everything optimized for mobile right out of the box. Don't worry about that. Nothing to patch, upgrade ever. Buying domains is simple. It's never been so simple. Has it ever been hard? Yeah, probably. It's never been so simple, though. And you will get the help you need with Squarespace's 24-7 award-winning customer support. Squarespace, get this, empowers millions of people And here's where the they don't care what you do comes in. Because, yeah, they've helped designers, lawyers, artists, gamers. But they have even helped restaurants and gyms, if you can believe it. If you, I I mean, when I got, when I got the information about this, I was like, oh, yeah, Squarespace. Yeah, I've seen their work on lawyers' websites, uh, artists' websites, gamers. But I've never seen them on a restaurant website, have I? Or And perish the thought seen them on a gym website, but yes, they have done it. They've helped them all to turn great ideas into something real. Head to squarespace.com slash bangbang for a free trial. When you are ready to launch, use the offer code bangbang to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash bangbang, offer code bangbang. (laughs) Comedy bangbang, best of 2018. Comedy bang, but I mean, that all went in, right? 
No. I think we, we had a, we had big a big mistake, big long conversation about the Dukes of Hazard and uh, Smokey, Smokey and the, the Bandit, Bandit off mic, which unfortunately did not go in. But uh, check that's, out our pa- check mistake. out our Patreon ah! for that ninety ah! second conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Um, welcome back. We are counting down the uh, 14, 13, 12, 11. 14, 13, 12, 11. 14, 13, 12, 11. 14, 13, 12, 11. And uh, we have come up to number 13 on the countdown. Here it is. You've been waiting for it. Number one, three. All right, number 13. Let's see. The last one we listened to was 558, which I believe was in the middle of the year around July or so. Yeah, that's this is. Right. 532. So this is even earlier than that. Even earlier than that, if I'm you can gonna believe. I'm going to say it's probably a June. <laughs> no. May. I didn't do 20 episodes in one month. Hey. Hey, I'm sorry. Come I don't on. mean to come down on you like that. You know I don't know numbers. <laughs> you know I don't How do you know, know 14, 13, 12, 11? I just, I'm just phonetically repeating it because oh, you say it. Oh, Paul. I can't stay mad at you. You're too cute. I'm adorable. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is episode 505, 532. Sure. This is an episode called Everything is Horrible and Wonderful. Ah. And guess who's in this episode? No need to tell me. It's Rod Stewart <laughs> and the Willies. <laughs> Who are the Willies? I don't know. <laughs> uh, no, of course, Paul F. Tompkins is in this episode. What? That's me. It's you. Uh, this is from February, if I'm not mistaken, and this is an episode with uh, our good friend Stephanie Whittles Wax. That's right. Her Who, name is a sentence. Her name, and we get to that in the episode. That's I'm right. not sure if we get to it in this clip. Well, who knows? Uh, but uh, Stephanie Whittles Wax is, of course, our dear friend Harris's sister. She wrote a book called Everything is Horrible and Wonderful, and uh, she came on the show to talk about it. Uh, R.I.P. Harris Wax. This <laughs> is Whittles, actually, was hmm? His name was Harris Whittles. Oh, don't tell me that. Is that is that for real? That's for real. Have you been calling him Harris Wax? The I entire called time? him Harris Wax for years. Oh no! And I said his full name every time. Hi, Harris Wax. Harris Wax. Harris Wax. Harris Wax. Harris Wax. Um, this episode also has Will Hines and Tawny Newsom in mm-hmm. it, uh, and we are going to hear a clip. Uh, this the things you need to know about the clip please is. Let uh, the, please let me be in the clip. You are in the clip, as a matter of fact. At uh, at this point in the the episode, I've... Please let me be the focus of the clip. You are the focus of this clip. Oh, thank God. That is not... Please don't do this for every episode you're in, because you are not for everyone. Uh, Please how I find out. Previous to this clip, uh, we've talked to Stephanie about her book for a long time. uh, And as I recall, uh, it was just me and her, and I kept uh, the rest of you waiting for an hour while we did that. Yeah, yeah. uh, You had a sock on the door. (laughs) So we couldn't go in there. <laughs> Which did not mean what I thought it meant. You guys assumed I was fucking her. Yeah. Um, and uh, yes, uh, I talked, I believe uh, something, uh, we started very late or whatever, and uh, then the then the conversation got uh, heavy in a way uh, at certain points. And You so guys argued about politics. Are, yeah. <laughs> She's a big Trump girl. She loves Trump. <laughs> <laughs> um, sweet leaf. Um, but, uh, uh, so I kept you guys waiting for an hour, but you were, uh, very nice about that. And you to came in. And so at this point in the episode, Morpheus, the dream Lord, who Will Hines plays, uh, Will Hines, another great addition, uh, recent addition to the, uh, comedy bang, bang, another uh, great addition, uh, uh, just a great crew of people. Um, sh- he, uh, I'm sorry. I'm being distracted by something happening, uh, in the other room. And I apologize for that. So sorry if I can't keep my train of thought, but, uh, our good friend Corinne is here to uh, drop off something for me. She is our good friend. And thank you very much. Do you want to get on mic? Her, hey, on tell mic. you what, I'll give you a Christmas present. Her Corinne, pod- say hi. Her podcast is called We Love Lucy. So, is that uh, true? Go, yes, go go listen to that. I had no idea. Yeah, I, that, uh, I'm getting the word out. Here you go. So uh, say I, hi. I can't wait for you to cut this later. <laughs> nope, I will not. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Corinne. Have a great holiday. Thank you, Have a great holiday. Merry Christmas. Um, and happy wandering Jew year. <laughs> is, it a, is it the right decision to be mentioning this term over and over in our best of episode? 
I mean, I mean, it, it isn't a. This is the place for it. <laughs> oh dear! All right. So at this point, Will Hines he plays Morpheus, the Dream Lord, mm. and he has put us ostensibly he has put uh, Stephanie and I to sleep uh, during like, the episode. Sounds like he's the focus of this. And uh, so we are in the dream uh, realm. Uh -huh. He has transported us to the dream realm yeah. during this clip. Right. And uh, Paul F., you play uh, a, a person named Brock Lovett. And uh, I for completely forgot. You, yeah, as did I until I listened to yeah. it. But uh, this is one of my uh, favorite appearances by you this year. <laughs> Let's listen to this clip. This is your number 13. Number one, three. All right. Well, let's welcome him to the show. He's a treasure hunter, and that's this is right. very exciting. Wow. Um, perhaps we'll uh, he'll lead us to some. Uh, I'll, I'll, that's not pressure I should put on you. As, well, right we'll off see. The bat. I certainly have a story to tell you. Oh, very good. He is a treasure hunter. Please welcome Brock Lovett. Thank you very much, Scott. Thanks for having me on the show. Welcome to the show. This is Morpheus, the Dream Lord. Hi, Morpheus. Can I get you a dominion? Yes. Can I get you something to could Diet Coke, a nostalgic breeze? Um, I mean, anxiety? There's, there's one thing I want more than anything else, but I don't know if you could help me out, and it would kind of maybe spoil my whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll make so sure. I'll to just take a, I'll, I'll take a poplar mousse look. Croy. All right, let me see. <laughs> I know I have coconut, but let me see what I got. Oh, coconut. <laughs> grapefruit, if that helps. That's what pomplamoose is. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, by the way, I can't eat grapefruit. And they and <laughs> I was out I... to dinner with uh, some acquaintances recently. And, um, like and good they, acquaintances? Like, uh, are you hiding a like name drop friends? there? Are you hiding a name <laughs> drop is what's going on? Are you trying to? <laughs> no, I may be doing a subtle uh -huh. <laughs> a subtle neg. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, but uh, they, they, serve, they want to serve me a drink, and they called it Pomplamoose, and I forgot that Pomplamoose. Your friends wanted to serve you this drink? <laughs> no, the, the, someone even worse, a waiter. Well, so the waiter just said, I want to you serve you this drink. You have to have Like you this? didn't ask for it? No, it was a, it was a, they, they say on the menu, surprise me. And I said, yeah, surprise me. Like I'll, I'll order whatever they want to right, make. Right. And then they said, okay, well, we want to bring you a Pomplamoose, whatever. And right. I didn't so know that you, was grapefruit. So they told you what it was going to be. That was the surprise? <laughs> okay, look, Brock. What? <laughs> you seem to be almost defensive this right was now, a story that This was a story that you initiated. I just wanted to <laughs> make sure I'm following it correctly. I thought that people would find it uh, of interest, but I guess not. Did you finish the story or no? <laughs> I no. drank the drink. Why can't you have grapefruit? Are you doing vocal warm-ups right now? <laughs> <laughs> I drank the drink of Pomplamoose. The drink you drank? <laughs> Look, let, forget it. This is uh, Stephanie Whittle's wax. Hi, by the way. Hi Stephanie. This how are Brock you? Lovett. Nice to I'm meet you. I'm a treasure hunter. I heard. That's fabulous. What sort of treasure do you hunt, my good man? Sunken treasure. That's my sunken expert, treasure. That's my area of Primarily yeah. sunken treasure. So if the treasure's on the land, it's not of interest to you. Well, I mean, if it's just sitting there, I'll take it. What if it's floating waist high? Sure. How and sunken does it have to be? What if it's under half a foot of water? What if a bathroom floods over some jewels? Here's, here's the reason. That's a, look, these are all good scenarios. The reason I say I primarily deal in sunken treasure is that's the treasure no one's gotten to yet. Oh. Usually bathroom treasure, if it's just, if you can still see it through the water, yeah. somebody will get there before me. Right. Okay, okay. Yeah, so this is it treasure. It belongs to somebody, like probably the person that lives there, and then you would be stealing, and that's not really. Maybe. I right, mean, right, right, right. it would be strange if I was in someone's home, their bathroom flooded, sure. and I was like, I'm going to take, <laughs> take these the shit. doubloons. <laughs> <laughs> so we, you've you've searched for water uh, in the seas. In the I have not searched for water. Usually, <laughs> sorry, I don't know where that you're is. You're not Columbus. Sorry. 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 I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> okay. Yes. Oh, I know I, of what, Christopher what? Columbus, the man who discovered water. <laughs> what, I'm yes. getting, what I'm getting from you is he was trying to discover air. <laughs> what from, I'm, from dreams, it's so hard to tell. He discovered water and then he enslaved it. It's, I don't yeah, know. That's what, right. That's what okay, happened. Enslaved the water. I but meant then to people say, were I'm, like psyched about it. I, I, it's hard to put together. I meant to say treasure, of course. You search for right. treasure uh, underwater. That's right. What I are do. some of the have you found much treasure? I've found I'm very famous for finding Spanish gold. Wow. Oh, wow. That's right. Like, you say you're very famous, so. In treasure hunting circles, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah, yeah. I got it. Yeah, because I've never, I don't think I've ever heard of you, have I? Well, let me ask you this. Have you heard of the Titanic? <laughs> wow. I can uh, see the italics um, in your phrasing. Do you mean the familiar. boat or the movie? What movie? There's a movie, of the Titanic. Boat. About uh, about the, the boat. Oh, a night to remember. That's right. Yeah, 
no, good no, classic not, not, film. No, not Everyone the, should see it. No, not it's that. one of the things that made me a treasure hunter. <laughs> no, there's a more recent film, uh, although recent uh, by 20 years what, ago. What, another Night to Remember? Uh, <laughs> a Night to Remember 2, Night one. at the Museum. <laughs> one more night. <laughs> um, uh, no, uh, t- uh, the movie uh, Titanic. Uh, starring Kate Winslet, who puts the titular tit in Titanic. Titanic. In, in now, yes, when I've heard people dream of this, they don't say it Titanic the way you just, they really, you really shorten that first, is that the proper pronunciation? Are people dreaming of movies they saw? <laughs> Mostly, yes. Well, that's the part, I, I'm a bit Am of a, I doing that? I'm a bit of a film buff. <laughs> I don't know, I don't By know. By the way, I don't Kate know what Winslet you put the buff in, film buff in Titanic, I have to say. All right, I think I know what you're saying. She's naked in it. Does she play... <laughs> Does she play Rose DeWitt? She does play Rose DeWitt, yes. A- am I in this movie? Wait, who? Uh, let me name Is there that... a character named Brock Lovett in this movie well, who's a treasure hunter? Does Leo DiCaprio play who Brock plays? Lovett? Yeah, who he the kid from yeah. Growing Pains? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you like Growing Pains? I love Growing Pains. Uh, what about that Alan Thicke? He was terrific. <laughs> He's a great guy. Too soon. Too soon. Uh, he died? He did. He did. <laughs> Oh. You don't know when people die? No, I just hit, people are still dreaming about him. I thought he was still around. I was like, yeah, this but is his dreams genial. aren't happening, can right? I, can oh, I, ask I you, didn't think to check him. Morpheus, can I ask you a question? Of course, anything. How I'm many people? How many people would you say are dreaming of Alan Thicke on a regular basis? I can. That's an information very I have. Let me look question. it up right now. Seventeen people. Oh, it's more than more I thought. More than I would yeah. think. Yeah. Like at this very moment. At this moment, there are seventeen Alan Thicke dreams going how, on. How many wow. people are dreaming of the Robin Thicke blurred lines video? Let me look at that. Oh, 150. <laughs> Right, that's I a bummer for Alan. Three models put the tit into that <laughs> video. Which video the is the least dreamed about? Well, these passive questions are, it's hard to prove the absence of something. <laughs> yeah. Is it I can dream about you? <laughs> no, that's pretty good. That's doing pretty From good. From Streets of Fire? <laughs> right. <laughs> what a great movie that everybody knows. Streets of Fire. Uh, oh, um, <laughs> Billy, Don't You Lose My Number by Phil Collins. Is oh, the video okay. That the least people are Oh, the Phil Collins. Yeah, yeah. That, that tracks. Okay, so now let me think. There's a, there's a Bill Paxton plays a character in this film where, oh, I guess he's a treasure the hunter. The guy from Weird Science? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you saw Aliens as well? I saw Alien, and I saw Alien Cubed. <laughs> <laughs> right. This was the one in between. It was Aliens to the Second Power. Hmm. Pass. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he's in it. You might like it. Uh, but he plays a character who goes looking for, I believe it's called the Heart of the Ocean. The Heart of the The Court of La Mer. This, this is my story. Mm. Really? So this movie's about me. I guess, yeah, well, I mean, I don't know that the movie's really well, about the Bill Paxton character. I mean, every movie, we all star in our own movies, right? Yeah, so yes. That's yeah, really wise. Yeah, thank you. I feel like you're trying to let me down easy, Stephanie. No way. I it, would never do that to it you. It starts with Bill Paxton. Uh, Sounds good. Go on. Uh, looking around for this precious jewel. He's that- looking around for it like he walks into a room. <laughs> yeah. He kind of scans the <laughs> Anyone room. Anyone seen that heart of the ocean? I mean, you don't, never know where you're going to find it. Uh, I only know what people dream about this movie, and no one has dreamed about this part of the movie. <laughs> yeah, mostly people are dreaming <laughs> about that, that, No one dreams that, about Bill Paxton looking through couch cushions for a priceless <laughs> necklace. That's, that's not what I've witnessed. There's a lot of people on the bows of ships and people drawing naked people and love and sacrifice. That don't, mm-hmm. It's not a guy like looking around well, for you it. Know, it was the naked portrait. That's how I found Rose DeWitt because I I dove on the Titanic and a submersible and I, I found this safe the where I thought I was going to find the heart of the ocean, but I did find this naked, this sketch of a naked lady. Then I had to call up Rose DeWitt and say, hey, look, I found this naked picture. Well, is that you? <laughs> How did that conversation go? Was it that was yeah. awkward. That's yeah. really awkward. It was awkward. <laughs> did, you, did you lead right in with that, or did you try to warm up? There was like a little small talk at first. <laughs> Chit-chat, just to, yeah. yeah. I was like, what do you think about sunken gold? Pretty interesting, right? I found some. <laughs> so really, what do you think about your profession? Well, yeah. I Not to asking see a lot of questions about her? Well, I kind of knew some stuff about her. And right. was, an old it, lady. was it her? It was her. Wow. And so I interviewed her at length. Did you get it right on the first call? I did. The Wait, first person first you called call. was Rose. Were there first phones? Call. Were there phones? But then, <laughs> yeah, in my, I no, mean, maybe not then, but there are this now. This was in 1997. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So yeah, there right, was phones. Okay, okay. <laughs> I couldn't remember. Were they as small as they are now? Or I've noticed that phones, they got smaller for a while. Now they're getting bigger. We talk landline to landline. <laughs> wow. Okay. That must be hard for you, a person who primarily likes Lives to go diving. <laughs> 
Deep dives. Do you feel out of sorts, Brock Levitt, when you are not beneath the ocean? I do. I love being... Here's the thing. I love being under the ocean looking for treasure, mm-hmm. and I love finding treasure under the ocean. Right. Those yeah. are my two loves. Two sides of the same coin. Seems okay. Like the Ooh, right coins. That gets me going. <laughs> Hypothetical. Two, I can give you two vacations. Okay. One, you're underwater the whole time, but there's no treasure. Ooh. Or lots of treasure, but it is dry as a bone. Just bone dry. I guess I got to go with treasure. <laughs> I, I like treasure more than anything. Is that what gets you into the ocean? The, the promise of treasure? I think I've established that. <laughs> that's why... <laughs> Because other people haven't gotten that treasure yet, so that's why right. I go there. But if if there if if suddenly it were to come out front page news, extra extra, there's no more treasure in the ocean. Would you say, well, I'm never going in the ocean again? Yeah, that's right. Really? <laughs> Look, if you told me that treasure was found exclusively at the top of stairs, <laughs> I, I'd go out and buy a Fitbit and <laughs> I'd make my steps every day. You ever get the bends? I have gotten the bends, yeah. Ooh, it's that's tough. Good. It's rough stuff. That's got to hurt. What are these say. bends? What are these bends you speak of? Well, it's if you come up too quickly, uh-huh. the, um, air, the, uh, the bubbles in, uh, oh, in your yes. blood uh, tend to expand. That's the, is, is that something That's like the that? same if you come out of a nightmare. Nightmares are all in the pool. It feels here, a lot like that. The water is. The, see those on the ground here, these lakes and oh, these yeah. creeks? Those are all made of nightmares. Ooh, is there any treasure in there? No, Brock, stay away from those. Those are nightmare creeks. You don't want to go in there. Oh. What's in them? There's treasure and there's. Um, what? what? <laughs> this is driving me crazy. There's fears. <laughs> That's all I want to do is go in that you. nightmare creek. Don't be a treasure tease. <laughs> I just, I'm, look, I'm not going to lie. There's some doubloons. I mean, there's nothing, nothing great. There's some doubloons. There's, I don't know, a couple arcs. Don't well, worry about it. Let me ask you this Do they stay doubloons? Un- uh, the whole time, or like you oh, bring no, them no. out of the Nightmare Creek, they turn into something else. They turn into something else, okay. and it's Thank all you. a lesson. And Good it's to cautionary. know. Yeah, okay. I don't need that. Yeah. Well, yeah. I will say at the end of the movie Titanic, um, what happens? Uh, Hold if on I may a second. Spoil it, you yes. don't have you don't have to tell me because here's what happened in real life. Okay. okay. Great. So I meet Rose Dewitt. I, I'm trying to find this Heart of the Ocean necklace. She goes on with this long story. All I care about is the treasure, right? Right, but she tells you a long. She tells me all about her life. Yeah. (laughs) Well, I'm sorry, Stephanie. (laughs) You don't care about water. You don't care about Rose. Just treasure. He's resetting. He's resetting. I get it. That's that's how I am at the beginning. I understand. And then by the by the end of her story, she tells you a story about a man with a toupee that is in love with her. That's right. (laughs) She tried to claim he had alopecia, but I was like, his eyebrows are fine, so I don't buy your story. I think he's just regular old bald. I know someone with alopecia, by the way. Jaunty alopecia. Wow, what a brag! (laughs) What a brag! It's tough. It's I tough wish, going. I wish I could meet somebody with alopecia. Does he really have alopecia, or did he fake alopecia to get out of a long-term relationship? <laughs> I've never been able to determine You've it. You've never been able? Well, I mean— I, I feel get, like you know one thing about this I guy. Ask, well, I do know that his wife's name is Carla for- <laughs> All right, we're getting off track. <laughs> okay. I can tell who has real alopecia, because in the people who are faking alopecia, in their dreams, they have hair. <laughs> but the real alopecia people in their dreams, nobody has it hair. It makes sense. Mm. Yeah. It's like so, you can't die in your dream. You can't, you can't, you can't go bald. You can't wait. have alopecia in your dreams. Unless you have alopecia. Right, yeah, yeah, if you do, then you're going to wake up with real alopecia. So she, tell, right. she tells you this story. And by the end of the story, you're, I realized the Titanic was more than just a treasure hunt. You know, this is about people's lives, and I had a new respect for it. Wow. And I, I, I was sad that I wasn't going to get the heart of the ocean, that it was lost forever. And I even threw my – I was keeping a cigar that I was going to smoke after I found it. I threw it overboard. Oh, wow, man. what a symbol of a moment. Exactly. So What a sacrifice. Rose and I stayed in contact, and we became friends. And, you know, she died a couple months ago, and I went to her funeral. And her granddaughter, Lizzie, confided in me. That Rose had the heart of the ocean the whole time, Whoa. never told me, and threw it over the side of the boat. Yeah, she does that Ouch. in the movie. She does it like literally right after she yeah, talks to you. We like saw she was it. wearing it the entire time. If you had just like maybe opened up her, her the cleavage of her shirt or as something, people, you I'm not going to do that. As people what do. a weird thing. <laughs> well, you're diving around in the ocean. Why not dive around in there? Uh, there's several reasons. <laughs> a few. Do you really need this explained? <laughs> I don't know. Wow. I may not know boundaries. Look, uh, 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 Scott sounds like uh, a guy who, I should bring him over to the wet dream <laughs> section of the dream. Yeah, unit. I'm, I'm a greedy monster with gold fever. But <laughs> what you said is really not cool. <laughs> so anyway, there are good guys left in the world, right? I right want them. You're one of them. There we go. The one. You probably won't be going to see too many movies if you date 
Brock over here because he's he's missed. I've seen a few movies. I've missed some others. What's the big deal? Which what's your favorite movie of all time? Let's see, favorite movie of all time. I gotta go with used cars. <laughs> Used cars. Sorry, the Kurt Russell. Robert Zemeckis film. <laughs> sure. Uh, no one has dreamed of that movie. I don't know. <laughs> no much one about ever. It. Used not, cars. I don't, not even me. <laughs> Let me check. <laughs> no, you haven't either. <laughs> That's too bad. It's not in your library at all. No, uh, there's no record of anybody having dreamed of this film. I got Tin Men. Is it, is it like Tin Men? Not really. I've okay. never seen that one. So all right. Well, a lot of people have dreamed of, of mm. Tin Men. Well, the fun young cannibals are in it. <laughs> Let me see. All of them? <laughs> yeah, all three of them. There's, right three, there there's three people. Uh, people have only dreamed of two of the fine young That's weird because I usually never miss their movies. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, here's got, my question. Now, when you found out that information a couple of months ago that, you know, the heart of the ocean is right where you were, why not dive back down in there and try, you know, try scooping it up or something? Okay. Well, did you hear the part where this is years later? Wow. 20 years. But I mean, the, you found it. Uh, you found the Titanic, so why can't you find the heart of the ocean? Yeah, it might still be oh, there. Oh, you found a gigantic <laughs> ocean liner. Why can't you find a necklace? <laughs> it's well, probably in the same sort of area. As yeah, it's where probably, probably 20 down. years later. Yeah. Probably just right. It probably hasn't like reached the bottom of the ocean Yeah, yet. no one saw that movie. Unless, so like unless as it was there. tumbling down, it, it somehow got wrapped around a turtle's neck who then, you know, okay, took look, like an we're, airstream we're, to... It's true. We're getting ahead of ourselves here. <laughs> Turtles. I was furious when I found this out. I punched and kicked the coffin. Okay, just the coffin, not the, the daughter. No, no, I couldn't get it open. Well, oh, okay. not the not the granddaughter, Lizzie. No, no, she's a lovely woman. I'm sure she's she's a very lovely woman. Well, really, I, I flirted with her quite a bit. Really? Yes, I now, did. How was she receptive to that? Or no, <laughs> she just she was tolerant of it. Mm. But you didn't like rip open her top like Scott suggested. No. Okay, because that's apparently his I, move. I knew what flirting was and what flirting wasn't. Okay, <laughs> it's really not hard to tell the difference. It's actually <laughs> very simple. Okay. So you kick the coffin. This is in and full in full view of the mourners. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I screamed and yelled. <laughs> I said, can you believe this lady committed a sin of omission, never told me that she had this necklace the whole time, mm. and everyone just, they were stifling laughter. Uh, let me ask you this. Uh, sure. Don't you think people knew about this because they everyone has That's seen the I'm movie saying. Titanic? Everyone, uh, everyone in that, at that funeral knew about it. No one had told me. And these are people I considered my friends. You considered the the granddaughter, the acquaintances of of Rose. You have to, to be understand, your we were on that boat for a long time, listening to this woman tell that story. How long was it? Because if for in movie it time, was like it was like two, two and a hours. half hours. Yeah, in movie, <laughs> it's too long. Too, so you two you hours consider someone you listen to a story for two hours? They're your best friends. We all be we all bonded. We all became okay. fast friends. Okay, and kept in touch all these many years. Well, Brock, <laughs> we're we're coming up on a break here. Uh, I feel terrible for you. I don't think you do. <laughs> I feel terrible for you. I think that you do. Thank you. I, I do. feel nothing. I simply fulfill my responsibilities. <laughs> How do you feel about that? I feel great. <laughs> I'm neutral. Okay. So is there anything else you wanted to say uh, about the situation before we go to a break? I just want to say, if anyone finds the Cor de la Mer, the heart of the ocean <laughs> necklace, if it washes up on shore, if you're... Swimming in a turtle's it, neck. Turtle if it's around a turtle's up. neck. Mm -hmm. if, a, if a dolphin is like bouncing it around for fun, <laughs> that belongs to me. I want that necklace. Some would say finders keepers. Do you abide by those kind of rules? You are a treasure hunter. Mm hmm. What do you, no, I obviously don't. <laughs> but you're the finder usually, yeah. I'm therefore the keeper. I'm calling dibs on that. I, I came as close as anyone's ever going to come. Well, she, Rose was closer. It was around her supple she didn't decolletage. She didn't find it. It was given to her. She wasn't searching for it. So if something is given, then it's their possession. Possession. What, what are you doing? Can't, or you you can't don't understand you what I'm talking it? about. Isn't it in someone's dreams? Finders, keepers, losers, weepers. Yes, if someone, has dreamed, it, yes, yeah. if someone okay. has dreamed about it, yeah, I could so find now it. Now I feel the time has come to ask you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> can you give me the heart of the ocean? I can give you a dream of the heart of the ocean. I can give you a very vivid dream of it. Can yeah. you give right. him now, the look, address of the person who dreamed it? Look here, it? in my hands. This is the heart of the ocean. Yes, the is it not? The heart of the ocean. This is your dream of it from your memories. The Cordelamere. Touch it. Touch it. May I? Dude, please. 
Oh, it's snakes. <laughs> what? Ah, uh, that's funny. Why? Oh, good dream Why? joke. They good all dream bit you. Joke. They all bit you on the fingies. Yep. Good little dream move. Uh, that's a dream right. move. Ten right snakes there. each biting one of my fingies. <laughs> Not nice. Number one, three. All right, number 13. Oh, Brock Good stuff. Lovett. Can I ask about Brock Lovett? By the way, sure. af- after uh, that clip, Tawny also comes in, <laughs> Tawny Newsom comes in playing the Rum Tum Tugger from the musical <laughs> that's Cats, right. That's right. which was making us laugh a lot. Unfortunately, yes. we don't have time to listen to all of that. It's banoodles. Uh, but let's talk about Brock Lovett. Yeah. And how did you get the inspiration for Brock Lovett? I think I accidentally did a, not accidentally, but I, I suddenly did a Bill Paxton impression for some reason. Were you talking about Bill Paxton or were you watching yeah, the no, movie I, Titanic? Bill, Bill Paxton came up. Well, I had interviewed him for, for a speakeasy, my, you did? my I did web series. Yes. Um, How and, was he as an interview? Uh, he was fine. He was fine. Mm-hmm. He's, he's like, you know, he was a Texas guy. He liked to tell stories. And so right. he, it was one of those interviews where it's like, I, I think I asked three questions. <laughs> That for me, that is the yeah, perfect interview. It's like you go right ahead. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, he was a very nice man. Um, and I think I was relating some story and I did a brief impression of him. And I was like, oh, that's actually not difficult to do. Right. <laughs> and so, well, this- when you're talking to someone too, or it's, it's, I guess, easier to do an impression. Like, if I were to just go up to you and name any random person, say, like, Shersha Ronan. Do, yeah, a, sure. do a Shersha Ronan right it's now. It's me, Shersha Ronan. <laughs> but if you're listening. I love Brooklyn. <laughs> but if you're listening or watching a movie of hers or you're talking to her in person, it's probably easier to just uh, break one out because you're, like, in that rhythm. Right? Yeah, man. So you You break it off. So you did this several years ago. You did this impression and then you. uh, Yeah. It was something it never occurred to me to do it on the show. And Mm then, um, I think I had reached a point. I mean, the, the, uh, here's a little, how the bread is made. Okay. Here we go. Doing characters. Sometimes, even if you have, you've come up with a, a, a wide variety of characters to choose from. If you're, you know, appearing on the show regularly, I got to a point, and I know that other people have gotten to this point too, where you just kind of hate all your characters. Who? You're. Si- I'm not going to say. Tell me who hates their characters. I'm not going to blow up. I'm not going to blow up. They're never allowed spot. back on the show. Because <laughs> it's like you have to, you have to come up with a new story for them every time. It depends, right. uh, d- depending on the type of character that that it is. Right. Um. And so it becomes like, I just don't feel like doing any of those voices. I don't feel like doing any of those people. And like Cake Boss, our old yes, friend buddy. our old friend buddy Velastro Will Cake he Boss. never return? He probably will at some point. Yeah, you just need to put him to bed for a while until yeah, you're not tired of him You anymore. lie down. Here's what I say to my characters. <laughs> you lie down. You, you lie down for a little bit, honey. You lie down in the bed. Don't you die. You lie down in the bed. Don't die. You lie down in the bed. Don't, don't die. die. <laughs> so... I don't know what made me think to do it on that occasion, but I I think there mi- I might have had a discussion with somebody about the movie Titanic, right? And how <laughs> how if that were a real character, how mad he would be if he watched the movie Titanic and saw yes what a dick move that is <laughs> <laughs> that she throws the thing into yeah, the ocean, a colossal waste of his time, <laughs> right? Well, it was a very funny clip, and uh, I would love Thank to talk you. to Brock again. Uh, I had forgotten that he existed until me? I listened to these back, but me I would too, lo- love too. to talk to him again. You never know. I know I'm not ma- uh, making requests, but him and Sully Sullenberger are two that I... <laughs> Sully Sullenberger, would, it's been a while. ...would love to uh, see return. Yeah. Uh, speaking of returns, we are going to return after these messages, uh, and we are going to be playing the clip of what you voted on to be your number 12 episode. You did this. This is the best of Comedy Bang Bang 2018. We'll be right back. Are you like me every night? You get in that big old bed of yours and you head on over to work at the Z Patrol. That's right, sleep. (laughs) Well, sleeping is maybe the greatest thing that we do as human beings. It will be our legacy. I truly believe that. A quality night's sleep, it helps you recover from distractions faster. It helps prevent burnout. It helps you make better decisions. It can even help you improve your memory and overall just make fewer darn mistakes. Sleep is great. It's not marketing. It is science. Well, to design a better mattress to give you the quality night's sleep that's going to help you out with all of that, what Lisa did is they 
I'll be damned if they didn't leverage 30 plus years of experience and hundreds of hours of scientific testing to develop the perfect mattress for all body shapes and sleeping styles. I will be damned if they didn't do that. So I pray that they have done it. Please, Lisa, don't be lying to people because I don't want to go to hell. Lisa's mission is to provide a better night's rest for everybody. That's what they want to do. They want to get, help everyone get all the rest they need. But that's not all they do. Yeah, it's their mission statement. Yeah, they want to do it. But that's not all they do. Through their 110 program, they also donate one mattress for every 10 they sell. That's more than 31,000 mattresses and counting. Oh, boy. Sold another 10,000 mattresses, Lisa, since the last time we did this ad. Congrats. Lisa strives to leave the world better than they found it, but that doesn't just stop with the mattress donations. Together with the Arbor Day Foundation, Lisa plants one tree for every mattress that they sell. That sounds to me like they have planted 310,000 mat- uh, trees. What if they planted 310,000 mattresses? <laughs> so whoever takes over the earth after the apocalypse is going to have a lot of uh, wondering what's going on with all those mattresses. No, they're planting trees. This is great. I have a Lisa mattress. You're going to want to sleep just like me. Give yourself the gift of a better night's rest this holiday. Get $160 off a Lisa mattress at lisa.com slash bang bang. Use that promo code bang bang at checkout. That's l-e-e-s-a dot com slash bang bang promo code bang bang. Comedy Bang Comedy Bang, 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 bang. 2018. 2018 And a uh, very uh, happy Christmas Eve to and you And a very happy Christmas Eve to you um, It is, I hope that you're gathered with your loved ones Or ignoring your loved ones as you listen to this <laughs> um, On so. Christmas Eve I or, like the idea that someone's listening to this While their family is In the other room Being together Yeah Yeah and you're just, just pouting in the other room. In. Yeah, just like, yeah. Oh, I want to listen to these <laughs> Paul F. and Scott. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up, Grandma. That little Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> Let me see if I can do a Napoleon Dynamite. <sighs> Is that Beavis? Ah, oh, it's Beavis. Or you're it's right. Butthead. I get that. Might be Butthead. I get those two. I think you were doing Butthead. No, Buttheads. Oh, no, you're right. I was doing This, this uh, is yeah. Beavis. Corn- right. Cornolio. Fire. Fire, fire, Cononi. He liked fire. TP for my bunghole. He liked TP for his bunghole. He liked fire until it was suddenly unsafe for him to like fire. Mm-hmm. Then he liked fire no longer. The the Beavis story. Was there an episode where he didn't, he stopped liking fire? No, I just think they had to phase that aspect out of his personality, perhaps, <laughs> as uh, someone set a fire uh, after watching the cartoon. Oh, how would they know? Like they said, like, how was this a, a little kid? I think it was a little kid. First of all, uh, fire is something that uh, mankind needs in order to survive. We need it. So we need it. It's, it's, one of the, it's one of the elements. It's an instructional video in order to uh, teach man how to make fire. What if he? What if Beavis had been like wind, wind? <laughs> that would have been safe. I guess they would have set up some sort of hydroelectric wind turbine or but something. But by the time they're doing that, I guess they're the hydroelectric get caught. would be water. They'll get caught. Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. A terrible tragedy. I don't know whatever happened to. Uh, that uh, that person, but uh, no toilet for you. <laughs> um, <laughs> All right, B. All right, let's get to your number 12. Number one, two. All right, this is the number 12 episode, and right. uh, we just heard from, uh, previously we heard 558, mm-hmm. then we heard 532, mm-hmm. this is 565. Solidly in the 500s. So about t- t- seven weeks after uh, the the Ship of Love episode, mm-hmm. which if that were in July, this would put us somewhere in September, I would imagine. Sure. Uh, so this is an episode called Come On Bake Bake. <laughs> Come on, Bake Bake. Mm. This is an episode with our good friend Jason Manzukis, who currently stars in The Long Dumb Road, which you can uh, get on iTunes and other places, I believe. Sure. Uh, and it also has Mary Holland. Oh. 
the very funny Mary Holland, I and it has so uh, Darcy Carden, oh. whom you can see on The Good Place on NBC right That's now true. as Janet. She's terrific. Uh, she is terrific. You will not be hearing her on, her on this clip, unfortunately, because we are going to focus on Mary's segment. But she was there. She was there listening, and you can hear her laugh in the background. Mm -hmm. Um, Yes, a little later after this clip, Darcy plays a girl from my past, but let's hear this clip. She's she's a a, a, women's libber laughing in background. (laughs) Very good. Thank you. Very good. Woman laughing in background. I think that's that's it for me. I think I'm going (laughs) to— You're done? You can do the rest of these yourself, right? (laughs) I guess I could. I'm never going to top that. (laughs) Okay. See you later. <laughs> All right. Scott, this has been D- a pleasure. Please, before you go, don't overturn the table. There's a lot of expensive equipment uh, on this. I kind please of feel like I should. Not an anger. Oh, not an anger, don't. but in victory. Yeah! <laughs> oh, dear. All right. Let's listen to this. Um, Mary Holland plays Eugenia Wobbles, uh, who is a baking reality show judge. This is your episode 12. Number one, two, um, all right, let's get to our first guest. Um, she is uh, an amateur chef. Uh, please welcome Eugenia Wobbles. Great Hello. British baking show. <laughs> okay. Is that your catchphrase? Nope. I, I, Are no. you on that? I was on the Great British Baking <laughs> Show. I'm a baker. I'm As a, a contestant? British woman. Yes. Oh, okay. I was on the Great British Are you baking clarifying something, show. or why did you shout that the minute that you, <laughs> you were introduced? Oh, because I love love to bake. Oh. You know, my children... You shouted it because you love to bake. Got it. <laughs> Got it. My children are all grown up. Oh, wow. So see, they're, you're an older woman. I'm an older woman, and yeah. I'm British. I mean, she could be 38. She, she could be tw- 32, for I'm all we know. I'm 99. Oh. <laughs> 99? 99 99. Is, that's as many problems old. as yes, Jay-Z young. had. <laughs> I live in a cottage, okay. and I have butter. I have a flower garden, and I smell like skin. What do we got? We got, we got butter? I, you smell like skin? Yes, I have butter. A flower garden. <laughs> those, are the, those are your possessions. You're like an opposite of a hoarder. You have butter and a flower garden. A flower garden. I smell like skin, and that's it. You smell like skin. <laughs> I Can smell, I smell you? Oh, sure. I take a whiff. <laughs> Yeah, that's skin. That's See, the skin smell. Oh, I yeah. never tell a lie. I'm British. It's interesting. You smell like British skin. Yeah. Isn't it true? It's It smells like cottled jam and a bunch of pudding flops. <laughs> and if you know Cottled it, jam and a bunch of pudding flops. <laughs> and I, I'm so excited to be here because Thank this you. show- Thank you. Your excitement is, is bubbling over a lot like yes. a- like a, a pot that is uh, has uh, you know water in it is boiling. I don't know. I'm trying like to make an analogy over. To, like to, to your baking, but uh, yes, you know. Bob's your uncle. Oh yes. What does that mean? I've heard that so it many times. It means it's so simple. All you have to do is think about it. Ah, oh, okay. okay, got it. Okay, and that's all I'll say. Now, <laughs> were you going right, Were you gonna help us figure out other common British phrases, the meanings of them? Yeah. Well, I can certainly do that. I can help you with that, of course. But if I'm here. Because because this is Come On Bake Bake. Yes? And I'm here. <laughs> this show? Do, come yes. On. Oh, no. Uh, this, this is Comedy Bang Bang. No, CBB. Come On Bake Bake. Oh, wait, so yeah. you, all you saw was CBB and you got that close to it? Yes! And you think, and do you think the first word is C apostrophe M O N? Come on, bake bake. Come on, bake bake. <laughs> I don't know. You're American. I had to, you yeah, know. Yeah, it's it up for If us. it was Come On Bake Bake, it would be, be Cobb. Cobb, yeah. Like Thai cob. Or like corn on the... Yeah. I don't know. Cob, I, comma, corn on the... <laughs> you know, I know someone who makes cob houses <laughs> in Britain. Really? Cob in houses. Brighton, Britain. <laughs> what are cob houses? I don't quite know what that is. Cob houses, it's a mixture <laughs> of mud and water oh. and straw. Wait, and so slightly watered Bob's down dirt. Oh. What's that? Slightly more watered down dirt. Yes, dirt with straw. This in sounds it. like a very. This does not sound like it's up to code. These these houses. Yeah. No, no, no. Very sturdy, and it keeps the heat in, and it keeps so it's the like cold a, it's out. It's like Adobe. It's like Adobe. Okay. It's like Adobe. I hardly know her. What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean by that exactly? Adobe. <laughs> Adobe Reader. <laughs> Adobe Reader. Adobe Reader. <laughs> That's Go my ahead. Name. 
Anyway, that's just a little joke. <laughs> that is, uh, very little. <laughs> um, Did you want to update it? No, no, no. No, you don't want to so, update no, your no, Adobe Reader. No, no, you don't want to update, update your, your Adobe, Adobe Reader. 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 <laughs> and also, I don't know what that is. I I don't have a computer. Why do we have to update Adobe Reader? It's like it was fine. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. what, you know. Uh, well, you know how to read. You know how to read. What's there to update? That's exactly. Um, so you thought this was a competition baking show. Yes, yes. Did you bring some of your equipment here? Of course I did. I brought a spoonful of flour. I brought Ooh, orange sauce. Tiny amount of flour. I brought a... Yes, in here, I brought a little spoon and a cup. An empty <laughs> nothing, cup. Nothing in it. <laughs> okay, great. So you have one spoonful of flour, mm -hmm. some orange what now? Orange sauce. Orange sauce. <laughs> orange. Well, like, is this what like, is orange sauce? Yeah, is this like a... Uh, oh, it's orange uh, sauce. <laughs> it's sauce. It's orange sauce. Is that like orange chicken sauce? No, or no, 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 no. It's orange sauce. It looks orange. It tastes orange. It's orange sauce. So it's like uh, uh, orange that's been, uh, uh, you know, juiced or something like that? No, or it's, it's, or it's orange that's been masticated. Oh, it's I masticated it orange. myself. Yeah. Yes. So you spit a, a <laughs> masticated orange into a cup. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. And then you add a little water like a cob house. And you ah. build it all together and it keeps the heat out and the cool in. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. The sauce does. The, of, for, of the cake? <laughs> anyway, and so, so I came on here because I'm just desperate. You see, I have, my life is just so weird. You know, my children are all grown up. Oh, they oh, are. Oh, sure, yeah. I mean, when, when, what age did you have your children? I when mean. I was 19. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> Wait, but they're still with us. They must. No, no. When oh. you say all grown up, you mean fully grown, I meaning mean fully dead. Fully grown, having lived full <laughs> lives and died. Okay. Not all of natural that's causes. That's as old all as they're going to be. At an old why, age. Why did you have to say natural causes? That's like. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. I'm just saying they died of natural causes. Your Nothing eyes are darting back and really forth. shifty. So yeah. shifty. Um, anyway. Can I ask you a question, Eugenia Wobbles? Yes. Did you win your season of Great British Bake Off? Or are you allowed to say? No, damn it. No. Oh, oh wow. that's strong language. I should have won. I should have won. Were you, did, did you not impress Mary Berry or no, Paul Hollywood? I didn't impress them. It was cake week, and I made a mouth cake, cake for my showstopper. Yep. It was a cake in the shape of an open trap. Yeah. And they a said. trap meaning like a trap door? Or no, no, like, like a like mouth a, trap. It was. Um, <laughs> a mouth trap. <laughs> mouth trap. Okay. A yeah. mouth trap. Sure. Okay. So okay. it's like a, a snap and, and a little a cheese. Oh, a yeah. mouse trap. Mouth Wait, trap. you have a lisp? You're <laughs> trying to say mouse trap. Obviously, she has a I lisp. I only have a lisp when I say, say mouse. mouse. <laughs> oh, got it. You just said no, mouse. It's just one of my little quirks. I'm a quirky British woman. <laughs> oh, so I made a cake in the shape of a mouth trap. Yeah, right. And of course, I had a little bit of cheese in it. Yes, of course. And How about a little uh, a cake shaped mouth? No, no. No, no. Okay. It was. It was it sort of. It was like. I guess I didn't really do the. I guess it wouldn't. Be, a, a mouse wouldn't be in the shape of a cake. It would no. be vice versa. <laughs> mouse shaped uh, cake. It was a mouth shaped. Well, you see. You see I guess. Uh, blah blah blah. My creep creep. Cre Cut to the oh, chase. Oh my god. Oh wait. <laughs> Holy cow. Vertation. What is happening? Are you okay? Are you having a stroke, cre 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 Eugenia? Cre 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 excuse me. Oh. Did I just press fast Ms. forward? Miss Wobbles. <laughs> I have a hard time. Here's the thing about me. I lisp when I say the word mouth, and I have a hard time pronouncing cri 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 critique. Oh, okay. Because I don't like cri cri critiques. Got oh, it. Got, got it. it. Oh, okay, yeah. A little, a little post-traumatic say... stress disorder from exactly. Great British Bake Off. From Paul Hollywood. Can you say Ooh. criticism? Criticism. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we just switched to that. <laughs> no, no, no. Because it wasn't a criticism, it was a critique. Uh, oh, now, you just said it. Oh, you did it. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> wow. It's almost, as if, it it's almost as if you forgot that and, you had that problem. That's not at all what happened. What a miracle. <laughs> anyway, what they said was, was that my cake wasn't a cake at all. It was a pudding. Oh, it was a, what's the difference? I never know when they talk about puddings. Pudding is is floopy and cake oh, yeah. is flappy. Got yep. it. Got it. Those, got are, ba is, those are baking terms. Yes, you and as a viewer of the show, I know. Yeah. Yes. Floopy and v floppy. That's right. So <laughs> I made wins, a. We lose. <laughs> I made a floopy mouth trap <laughs> that that had cheese in the middle. Oh, uh, you should have made a floppy mouth trap. That's what I didn't know. Mm. And then and they said they tasted it. Yeah. Do you know what they said? What, what did they say? Do you know? What? I didn't watch that season. What did they say? They said this is sour. Sour. Oh wow. What what in it was sour? What were the ingredients? Well, I put. I put 
hard boiled eggs. <laughs> okay. okay. The things that make just, you fart. Just in the cake? I put minced thyme. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, now, by that, I don't mean the herb. Herb. I oh, mean you mean the, the concept clock. of thyme? Yes. I took a clock and I and minced you just, it. Oh, oh, gosh. Okay. Yes. So, like Scattered metal shavings. Inside. Yes. Ooh, that's yes. Yeah, but also not sour. Well, yeah. yeah, we haven't gotten to the sour parts yet. <laughs> and I put in. Is this a family <laughs> recipe? <laughs> this is my own creation. <laughs> so no, it doesn't exist. No, no, no. No one in my family baked. So everything so far has been savory or metal. <laughs> so, what? Well, get to the sour. That's part. my style. <laughs> so the sour part was um, what I did was I took a lemon. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah. we're listening. <laughs> I took a lemon. Okay. Oh, we're hooked in. I threw it in the trash. Oh, oh surprise, didn't see twist. that coming. Twist. Just like Ian did with his cake in season three. Whoa. Right. Threw it right in the bin. Why are as your they eyes say. darting back and forth mm-hmm. again? No, I know Ian in season three. Wait, are, I, you the no. old, are you the old grandma who took his cake out of the fridge and like. <gasps> No, that's not me. I, know, I didn't do either. that. Her name wasn't Eugenia Wobbles. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. and then and then of course I added in some cinnamon sure, and a little sweet. bit of vanilla. Okay, also yeah. sweet. And, and then I made, of course, my my sponge, my sponge for my pudding. Yes, okay, of course. Yes. But this is, you know, everyone for your cake. Like, for my pudding cake. Yes. And everyone's like, that's flappy. That's flappy. Pudding, flop, pudding floopy. flops. You need pudding, floopy. You need floopy. A bunch yes. Of, also, a bunch of pudding flops, if you remember. Yes, yes. A good, a good <laughs> gobbled. Go- <laughs> Holy, Are you all right? Was there another cow. word you can't say? Holy cow. <laughs> no, like, no, no. You I don't have to rush. Fine. You don't no, have to no, rush. No, no, no. <laughs> slow down, slow down. <laughs> and, um, and, so, and so, yes, and so that's, so those, so those ingredients, and then I put in, and then I put in a pepper. A pepper, okay. A ghost pepper. Oh, wait <laughs> a minute. That's spicy, very spicy. but also savory. <laughs> and then I, <laughs> and then. So far, I will say this cake. <laughs> Nay, pudding. <laughs> Sounds delicious. Other than the metal shavings, which might <laughs> slice up your gums. Other than the indigestible metal yeah. shavings. Well, well, well. Don't than, knock it till you've tried other it, than the Bob, minced, your uncle. The yeah. minced timepiece. <laughs> and then I put in a car charger. <laughs> okay. What do you mean? A, a car charger. You know a car, it, a car charger, charger. I believe. A sure, car like, like for an electric car? Yeah, no. No. A charger for your phone and your Oh, I, so like a little, oh, oh, I see. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh. And then I put in some Sour Patch Kids. <laughs> oh, <laughs> here we go. Sour Patch Kids. How, and what was the ratio of Sour Patch Kids to? 100%. <laughs> oh, wait. So all so, the other ingredients were not in it. No, it was no, just no. Sour Patch Kids. Those were just things I thought about putting in it. I just gave them a dish full of Sour Patch Kids. Oh, okay. So and not... they said it was too sour. <laughs> and they said that that was a pudding? <laughs> I said that was a pudding. Well, you were trying to make a you cake. You were even trying to say it you was a cake. You were trying to make a mousetrap oh. cake. You said they called it a pudding. Yes. And then you said you put down a bowl of Sour I Patch Kids. don't think about it too much. Everything I say is true. Yeah, you have PTSD from oh. this experience. Well, exactly. Yeah. Number one, two. Oh, funny stuff. Oh. Funny equals money. That's true, man. <laughs> That's fucking and true. And she is rich with laughter. Rich as creases. Rich as creases. Who is creases again? Uh, he invented creases pieces. <laughs> <laughs> the richest candy maker. Eclipsing Mr. Wonka himself. That's right. That loony bird. <laughs> All right. Let's go to a break. When we come back, Paul and I will be ca- still remaining to count down these episodes, and we will play... The episode number 11 for you. Mm -hmm. This is Comedy Bang Bang. We'll be right back. (laughs) Cough, cough. Sound familiar? Yeah. Guys are terrible at taking care of their health, aren't they? All those guys over there, terrible, taking care of their health? Yeah, they are. Whether it's a knee injury, a bad back, or something worse. What's worse than a knee injury or a bad back? I can't think of anything. Guys are usually a little more comfortable rubbing some dirt on it, if you know what I mean, than seeing a doctor. Do you know what I mean? I actually don't know what I mean. Um, look, it's it's frightening to go. It's frightening to talk to anyone, frankly. But doctors, you know, they uh, 
it's the fear of the unknown. They're going to tell you a bunch of things that you need to change or here's what's it's, it's almost, even though it, it's, it's horrible to not know and it, it creeps into your brain. It's always just better once you know what's going on, you know? So go like taking care of your health is very important. And the same is true. I have heard of erectile dysfunction. Studies show that 70, and these are studies, by the way, not personal experience. They show that 70% of guys who experience ED, they don't get treated for it. Well, thankfully, Roman created an easy way to get checked out by a doctor and get treated for ED online. You don't have to go into your your uh, your old country doctor that you've been going to since you were uh, knee high and say, mm, by the way, it don't work, doc. No. This is all online. Roman is a one-stop shop where licensed U.S. physicians can diagnose ED and ship medication right to your door. There's no waiting rooms with Roman, no awkward face-to-face conversations, no uncomfortable trips to the pharmacy. You can handle everything online, and all you got to do is visit GetRoman.com slash BangBang. That's it. Fill out a brief medical onboarding, chat with a doctor, and get FDA-approved ED meds delivered to your door in discreet, unmarked packaging. Erectile dysfunction is a problem that most guys don't tackle, but with Roman, it is easy to take care of. For a free online visit, go to GetRoman.com slash BangBang. That's GetRoman.com slash BangBang for a free online visit. GetRoman.com slash BangBang. Comedy Bang Bang. Comedy Bang Bang. Best of 2018. B-O-T-O-1-8. B-O-T. I thought you were spelling power bottom for a second. <laughs> Ebenezer Scrooge, notorious B-O-T-O-1-8. power bottom. Oh, W. <laughs> Just like cheerleaders making a stadium spell out power bottom. Power bottom. <laughs> what if, what, just as a prank. One just day, as, oh, you did just as Bill a, Maher hands. Just, uh, I, ju- <laughs> just as a prank. just as a prank. New rule on uh, a Wheel of Fortune. Mm-hmm. Pat Sajak and Vanna White are waiting to come out on stage, yeah. and the producer says to everyone in the crowd, "Okay, instead of shouting Wheel of Fortune this time, <laughs> we're going to shout out and spell Power Bottom." Yeah. <laughs> just as Pat Sajak comes out. You, so here's what happens: you're gonna as they come out. You're gonna you're gonna chant Power Bottom. Then we're just telling you we're not telling Pat and Vanna. Every puzzle is going to spell a power bottom. <laughs> Every single one. <laughs> and but we're going to change the description of the clue each time. Like, oh yeah, thing pad is. That's right. <laughs> or <laughs> or fa- uh, fa- well, what are some of their other clues? Like famous in the news or something like that. Sure. Do they do in the news? <laughs> in the news, power bottom. <laughs> <laughs> that would be what a wonderful world that would be. Well, I, I want to live in that world. I do. Uh, I want to go to there. <laughs> uh, Thirty Rock. That's right. Were you ever on Thirty Rock? Nope. Neither was I. We Never. are not New York actors. No. However, I lived in New York for a year. That's right. And you could have. I could have. I. I never. The. The most embarrassing thing. This is a career shame for me. Mm-hmm. Lived in New York for a year. Never even got asked to audition for a, a law, law and, and order. order? Not You're any kidding. of them. Did you announce to the Law and Order various spinoffs and main show that you were arriving yes. in New York? Yes, or I presented they, them with my they car. They track this, right? Yes. They, I, I, they I, talk I, to the border security. <laughs> I visited their offices. I presented them with my calling card. <laughs> I said, I am in, I am in town for one full for a, calendar year. <laughs> well, at that time, it was an indeterminate amount of time, I would imagine. Yeah. Your show got canceled, is what I I'm mean, saying. I mean, I should have realized. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny was that that experience was like, uh, you know, it's going to be for at least a year. Yeah, at You're least like, a year. All right, all right, we'll figure it out. And then as soon as the year was up, Canceled. <laughs> <laughs> and Jane and I were like, let's get the fuck out of here. It's GTFO. Get the fuck out of here. Let's say goodbye to the Statue of Liberty. I'll take a flame over that place. <laughs> is that uh, our good friend Al Pacino? Uh, is that our bad friend? <laughs> Wh- uh, which movie was that from? That's from he take a flame thrower, Scent of a Woman. He takes a flamethrower to some place? If he were the man he was 30 years ago, he'd take a flamethrower to this place. In which place? The restaurant? Uh, the court of Law. Court of Law. He's in a court in yes. Scent of a Woman? Yes. 
Did, does every Al Pacino movie just like finagle him into a court so he can scream yeah. at someone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're out of order. Yeah. Remember, this vending machine is out of order. D- does he appear in court in Dick Tracy? He pro- he should, yeah. He should probably get arrested and then just yell at a judge. <laughs> he does in Devil's Advocate, certainly. He's an absentee landlord. Isn't he a lawyer in that? Yeah. That's based on a pun. That's a I Dream of Genie pun-based pitch. It's the same people. <laughs> really? Yes. The I Dream of the Genie people, team? The I Dream of Genie team made the Devil's, Devil's Advocate. Advocate. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, makes sense. That With the Dollars rising painting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember it. Opening you, don't, you don't intimately remember every scene from the Devil's Advocate? That's another opening nighter. So excited mm-hmm. that I n- don't remember a single thing from and uh, have never seen any of it ever again. Is that good? Do you think... It, you should see every movie twice, even something that's not every good, just so you can movie. remember why it was so bad. Yes. And so you can give it a fair shake. A fair sh- Has there ever been a movie where you were like, this is a piece of shit. Mm-hmm. And then you watch it again and go, I was wrong. Yeah, I Boondock Saints. Boondock Saints. <laughs> <laughs> when I first watched it, I thought, this is very stupid. And then when I watched it again, I was like, I was wrong. It's brilliant. <laughs> All right. We need to get... All right. All right. Enough. Uh, that's enough out of you. You were talking to your hat there. You- <laughs> yeah, that's enough out of you. You didn't hear him? <laughs> who, who makes that hat? I'm trying to read upside down. I can't. This is from the Wellama Hat Company. Wellama. Yes. This is and a, where is, where is Wellama is a bes- based? A, a, a bespoke hat, dear boy. Uh, and I see your name in there. Yes. It says Paul... It says Mr. P.F. Tompkins. Mr. P.F. Tompkins. There that's it is. me, by the way. Where, do, where, where are they based? Altadena, California. Altadena, California. That's Go right. get all of your uh, bespoke hats. He's made several hats for me, that gentleman. Has yes. he really? Yes, he has. And do you, do you think he really makes them, or does he just call China and go, get to work? I think he calls China. Yeah. Jiggity China. Speaking of Thomas Middleton <laughs> calling oh, China. Oh, boy. Ah, all right. Let's get to uh, our next clip. This is your episode 11. Number one, one. All right, this is number 11. 14, 13, 12, 12 11. 11. Of we course. did it. We did We're it. We're as good as our word. And this is, uh, let's see, we started with 558, then we went to 532, which is about in February. Uh, this is 524, even mm. earlier than February. And this, and look, this is apropos for the day that today is, uh, if you're listening to this on the day it's released. I this, am. This is Christmas Eve, and this is an episode called Merry Chunky Christmas. Merry Chunky Christmas. Merry Chunky Christmas. Let me tell you about the people involved. We have... Let me tell you about the people people involved. involved. We have Neil Patrick Harris. NPH. NPH, who, uh, uh, before appearing on this show, I did not know, is a a big fan of Comedy Bang Bang. And, uh, uh, in fact, was doing a promotional tour for Downsizing, I believe, and um, wow, yeah, okay. his, his uh, yeah, I think so. Forgot about that movie. And his uh, publicist, he told his publicist he wanted to do comedy bang bang. And his publicist, like most public, I found most publicists uh, do not take this show seriously. And uh, nor should they. Nor should they. And they entertain the idea of their client doing it for a while and yeah. get me all excited about it. And then we schedule <laughs> it. And then uh, approximately one day, then the client before, listens to the show. No, the client never listens to the show, nor knows that this is on his or her schedule. Right. Uh, but uh, uh, and the publicist will get everyone excited about uh, this client doing the show, and then about a, a twenty-four hours in advance, we'll say, "Oh, they don't have time anymore. Their schedule changed." And all of the work that I've done in uh, booking people, the other guests, and all that uh, is all for naught. And uh, that it looked like that was going to happen with Neil on this show um, because I heard that he was – I heard he was a fan and you can never really take that as gospel. Exactly. Uh, but I, I did hear that rumor. and Because it, this is Hollywood. All the time we're saying, oh, I love what you do. We hate we it. We hate it. We hate everyone hate else's it. work. I, we hate when our friends become successful. Oh, Morrissey. Who? Um, <laughs> fun. So – this was on my schedule, and I had booked uh, you guys for a while. And then suddenly, I think about for it. For a while. I think about 24 hours in advance, the publicist said, oh, Neil's schedule changed, and he no longer can do it. And I said, the of course. The old refrain. I said, of course, I understand. And then, but then it got put back on the schedule because Neil saw it taken off his schedule. Oh, fuck. And he said, wait a minute. 
I want to do Comedy Bang Bang. Oh, shit. And he really wanted to do it. Oh, shit. Which was very, very nice of him. So, And then uh, he fired his publicist yes, on air. On air. <laughs> And he hired me as his publicist. Yeah, hey, I didn't know and that. my only idea to, for publicity is to talk about this story sure. on the air. Um, so in this episode, um, Paul, you play, oh, the other people involved are, it's Neil Patrick Harris, yourself, Paul F. Tompkins, and Sean Diston. That's right. Sean Diston, who uh, has made quite a splash this year. Quite a splash. As a lot of people's uh, favorite, one of their favorite performers, and as he calls himself, self-professed fan favorite. Um, This is the first episode in which he plays... Self-professed fan favorite Rudy North. That's right. This is the very his de- his character debut. So let me explain what has happened before this clip. Now, if you recall, uh, Neil very graciously fit about an hour of the recording into this, yeah. um, but we didn't want to put out an episode that was right. just forty-five minutes or an hour. Right. So instead, you and I talked as big chunky bubbles for approximately half an hour yeah. before he before he arrived. Yeah, we're not going to hear that. Uh, and then Neil arrived, and we talked to him for a while. And then Sean came in and uh, debuted the character of Rudy North. So the people involved, you'll hear Big Chunky Bubbles, who is a uh, soup artist. But not the focus of the... Not the focus of the clip, no. Okay. Remember, okay. I tried to no, I, I, prepare I, I, you for I, this sure. eventuality. Sure, sure. But the way you, you, you like, brought me up first, and it made me think that... Well, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So, ahead. but you are, you do, uh, no, you know, sure you have some expert chime Sure, it's great. Sure, it's great. <laughs> so this is Rudy Rudimentary North. Um... He is going to uh, talk about his life. Uh, uh, so let's listen to this. This is your episode 11. Number one, one. So I, to, to, to leave Miami and, and come to a place like Los Angeles and be able to be employed, Postmates has done me such a favor. Now, you, you know, came out here just to work for oh Postmates? Yeah. I okay. came out here three or four months ago mm-hmm. just to work for the Postmates Corporation. Did Postmates have a have an ad out saying, hey, do you want to live in Los Angeles or something? Yes, yeah. it was a Craigslist post that I saw <laughs> that I, I, I answered, and at first it was a scam, and it wasn't Postmates. <laughs> at first it was a scam. <laughs> at first it was a scam. You were it, petrified. I was pe- at first it was a scam, I was petrified. <laughs> but <it's> st- <laughs> right. You know, I couldn't believe it. And, you know, so basically... But wait, the song did, it, continues. Did, <laughs> did it turn into not a scam on the same call? <laughs> yeah. Or? No, that's just how I learned about Postmates. <laughs> oh, I see. So the first one was a scam. The and first then was found, a scam. Okay. I was petrified. <laughs> and then I learned about Postmates and decided on my own to purchase a ticket to Los Angeles. Oh, my gosh. Where'd you get this ticket? Now, that's a whole story in itself, Scott. And I can't go into the dirtbag things I did to get this ticket. I did some bad That's for stuff. another episode. That's for another episode. I'm glad I'll be back for another episode, Scott. I'll, I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> <Continue>. <laughs> and, uh, we'll talk about that next 10 episodes from now. Okay. Now, I got here and and I needed a car, Scott. Mm. So you did not own one. I did not own a car, mm. so I needed a car. Mm-hmm. So what I did was I was walking down Sunset. Okay, that's and a good start. That's a good start. As Certainly. one does. And I could see that there was were- Was it time to feel good? <laughs> I was walking down Sunset. It was time to feel good. <laughs> <laughs> and I continued walking down Sunset, and I saw a lot of cars passing, and I thought that was an opportunity. Okay. So I, so I jumped into traffic. Oh. oh. I jumped into traffic and was hit by a Toyota Tercel. Oh, hit. I was hit by a Toyota. I, I, I really kind of jumped on the car. Okay. Made it look like I was hit. Going how fast? Oh, he was going a clean 60 up Sunset. 60? Yeah, he was speed. <laughs> what time of day was this? <laughs> it was rush hour. <laughs> it was rush guy, hour? Yeah. This, this, okay, this guy deserves it yeah, then. <laughs> I, that's what I was thinking too. He was driving on the sidewalk. Turns out what? he was a Postmates driver too. Oh. Complete dirtbag. Okay. But I, I dirtbagged him out of his car. So I said... You hit me with your car. Let's not have insurance handle this. Give me the keys. Just give, the me the keys. Keys. give me the keys. This is like real Fast and the Furious style. That's exactly where it's like, I was like, give me the, give me the slips. The keys. I want pink slips. Right. Wow. And How I, hurt were you? Can I, you get hit I by a car. Very, I was very hurt. Neil, it was a good, thank you for asking. Yeah, I was pretty fucked up. So I, I got into his car and basically <laughs> because my leg was broken, I pretty much drove around for the next three or four weeks. But wait, because, <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't get the logic of this. Yeah, I, <laughs> Could you not you move know? your leg to yeah, the break? Well, first of all, I did have a place to stay. So, okay. I, and I also, once I was in the car, it was very difficult to get out of the car. 
Okay. You know, so that was that was hard I for see. me. So the so the not the operating the the machinery of the car was okay. That just was easy. I just used my left leg. Okay, but getting out was difficult. That was very hard. So okay. what I did was I took over this man's order. I delivered his post. Oh, so he was mid order. He was mid order. I it. took his order. I usurped his job. Okay, pretty much using his identity. So wait, this is app. like a life swap. <laughs> yeah, I life wow. swapped with him pretty much. Wow. So when you get hit by a car, you can just life swap with someone. Hey, if you got the dirtbag skills I do, Scott, you could do whatever you want. God, I want to go around trying to hit you with a car, <laughs> or no, getting hit by you. Wait, I don't want to hit yeah, you. Yeah, you better be careful, You don't want Scott. my life. <laughs> you don't want that. Can I ask a question? Of course, Neil. Do you know what happened to this guy now? Oh, Neil, I did find out. I did find out what happened to him. What, is he, is he, is is he okay? Everything's okay for him? Oh, yeah, he, he was fine. He is was he fine. back in Miami? No, he's no longer working at the Postmates Corporation. Oh. He's working for Lyft. <laughs> you said that like, like it was so dramatic. He just, oh, wait. He's working? <laughs> For Lyft. Now he got another car. I was about to say, yeah, don't you did. need a car for Lyft? He went Lyft? right down to the. Why? He went right down to Honda. Why did you say it like it was this <laughs> well, wait a minute, horrible you guys, thing that happened to him? You guys know that working for these these passenger company, the, the, the right passenger share? delivery companies. Wait, you call it a passenger I call them delivery? passenger delivery instead companies. of food delivery. It's not food delivery. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know me. Now <laughs> it's those companies are terrible because I'll tell you why, Scott. Okay. you don't get to leave your car. I see. Oh, that's true. Okay, so mm. when you're in Postmates, I've never really thought about yeah, this. Yeah, when Postmates, I, I pull up to the pull up to the restaurant, double park, of course, <laughs> of course, <laughs> of course. Throw on my hazards, of course, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I put on my hazards and I run in. Right. Get so your let's hazies on. my hazies on. Let's say I'm going to Sugarfish. Right. Sure. Mm. Throw my hazies on. I run into Sugarfish. I grab the sushi. I don't. Even, I, I'm grabbing it so fast. Quite honestly. The sushi sloshed around in the bag by the time it gets to the house. Oh, it <laughs> so, sucks yeah. when it's sugar it's not fish. Good. Oh, yeah. It's not special good. Special it's containers. not good. No, I know. I'm not good at that. But what I do is I get to be out of the car. I get to communicate with people in the restaurant. And then how? What are you? What are you saying to these people in the restaurant? I'm you're you're doing it so fast. Oh yeah, like, I'm doing. I'm saying stuff like, "What's up? What's up, Charles? Um, how y'all doing? <laughs> okay. How y'all doing in the back? That kind of thing. Okay. <laughs> A lot of greetings. A lot, a lot of crowd work? Yeah. Cr- <laughs> Interesting. I, mean, I say, like, a lot of people here tonight. A lot of people, wow, what a crowd. I say stuff like that. Okay. To the, to the kitchen crew? <laughs> to the kitchen crew. I say, any of y'all from out of town? And they, a lot of them are from out of town. <laughs> Anybody <laughs> celebrating anything tonight? Anybody celebrating a lot of anniversaries in the Sugarfish Kitchen. And, and because... The kitchen? Mm-hmm. <laughs> But, I thought this was to the people eating. Oh, no, oh, it's no, the no, no. People in the back. Okay, I, I don't interact with the people in the back. I'm a man of the people, Scott. Okay, got nice. it. You know, you, you saw me come in. I said hi to Brett. I shook his hand. I said, hey, Brett, how'd you do, Brett? I t- I'm a man of the people. I, I, I get that sense about okay, you. Okay, so yes. I talked to the people in the back, and then guess what, Scott? Now I'm delivering your food. Right. I get to get back in my car. You're back in the car, much like a Lyft driver. Just, much like a Lyft driver. But, but I had that fresh air for a second, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and then, then once you get to the place... Oh, well, no, no, no. There's many steps before that. Oh, sorry, sorry. I don't mean to before hurry that, this along. Of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I beg your pardon. Before that, and of course Neil knows because you're a big fan. Before that, once I get the food, I like to give Neil a call. Neil doesn't even know what Postmates is <laughs> 10 yeah, minutes I, ago. I, this is all new to me. Neil, wait, now hold on. Now, you might not know this, Neil, but... Your assistants have ordered Postmates for you many times. Really? Whoa. You don't you don't remember me? I well, I remember the sugar fish. You don't you remember the slosh around bag of sugar, sugar fish? Yeah, I actually do. I was kind of pissed off about that. Neil, I can't believe you don't remember me. That man. was we, you? We had a whole interaction now. Neil I was does like, are, What the fuck is up with my sugar fish? And we did fist fight for a few minutes. Fist fight. That? There I was do a fist remember fight. This, actually. He said, What's up with my sugar fish? And I said, Fuck you, and I just <laughs> threw a punch. Wait, you threw first. He yeah. hit me in the throat. Yeah, I went right for the throat. Oh, my God. Why the throat first? It's called a dirtbag's handshake. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that makes dirt sense. Dirtbag's handshake, you just you chop to the throat or punch to the throat. Got it. I, I really flew off the handle very quickly, but then you know what? I said, I'm sorry. Mm. And, and I you said, asked if you could use the bathroom. I said, can I use your bathroom? <laughs> and then you just. And then you said, of course. <laughs> of course. Well, and I then just said, of course. <laughs> right. It was a weird voice, but I, yeah. I took it. I took it as politeness. Bleeding. I know you play a lot of characters. I was bleeding from the throat. Well, yeah. Oh, 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 right. I forgot. Did and I then did. just chilies coming out into his bathroom. And then, yeah, I made the fudge in your bathroom <laughs> for a few minutes. I'm surprised you don't remember me, Neil. I uh, respect. Now, well, Neil, I did want to talk to you about this because I did check my rating afterwards. Yeah. And I did get four out of five stars. 
four. That, that, that's that seems appropriate. Generous. Ah, that doesn't even seem to appropriate to me. That yeah, seems like you're yeah. being. I don't want to give. Well, listen. If you give if you give two or three stars, there's a problem. You know what I mean? It sounds to me like there's a problem. Well, I, got punched, I got punched in the throat. You yeah, know, I, Neil, I'm, you must have such an interesting life that stuff like this happens to you so often that you don't remember it. Have you ordered sugar fish before? Uh, yes, of course. And have you ever had a problem when they came and— I have, but I've, I haven't been punched in the throat regarding— Wow. You don't remember wow. me either, well, I think I think you may have the crazy— <laughs> Wait a minute. You delivered to me you, as well? Co- wow. I can't believe— <clears throat> Yes, of course, Scott. I have delivered to you. It, I, was, it wasn't Sugarfish. I remember the food. Usually, I don't remember. It the was Mendocino delivery. Farms. Oh, Mendocino Farms. Yeah, I get that salad. You, don't, with you the, get the salad, the grilled with the chicken, grilled yeah. chicken, right? Uh-huh. And you had a problem that there was no grilled chicken in your salad. Well, it's the grilled chicken salad. Of and course, I, I have a problem. I told you, Scott. Someone cut me off on the street. And I took the little strips of grilled chicken out, and I was throwing it into their car through the window. <laughs> and and you needed to understand that that's part of the delivery process. I'm defending your orders. And Scott. what did I do? I don't really recall. Well, you turned around. I punched you in the butt. <laughs> you punched me in the butt, <laughs> right? You don't remember this? <laughs> you don't remember? I hit you right in the glute. That seems weirder than a throat punch, I Scott. Guess, I guess you're. Right. And you're so know. tall. I did go for the. I did go for the throat. You're going for the throat punch. How yeah. tall you were. <laughs> Yeah. Neil was standing in a, in a trench when I punched him, but you were not. Yeah. So I, I, I went for the neck right in the butt. Yeah. I can't believe you don't remember that, Scott. I, unless it's the actual butthole. I don't, you know. No, you don't these remember. These things kind of right, like are right, hazy. Right. Yeah. Do you remember what, what Scott's rating was for you? <laughs> yeah. Scott gave me four and a half out of five stars. <laughs> oh, so. and, and I do want to say I'm not happy about these ratings. Wait, who's you don't the, like four and a half? I'm who's a the perfectionist. Pot and who's the kettle now? Look, like, much like Big Chuggy Bubbles That's over here. Good question. <laughs> much like Big, Big Chuggy Bubbles. I'm a perfectionist. Right. <laughs> I never. I, mean? I don't really think that's something true you can say about Big Chunky what? Bubbles. What? <laughs> How dare you? You ain't seen this. You ain't seen the soup bubble, Scott. You've seen my act. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I've seen. I've driven past your. Have act you delivered a lot. soup to him? Oh yeah. I did want to. I, I yes. Do you not remember that Big Chunky? I bubbles? do remember. Of course it. he does, because he is a gentleman. I gave you five stars. You gave me five stars, and I did. Give you a little bit of a titty twister. That's right, but <laughs> Wait for at, it. at my request. Yeah, yes. I, I, I came by and- I was falling asleep. Yeah. I had some Jones on third, and I said, Big Chumpy B, Big Chumpy B, I got you some soap. I got you some soup and some soap from Jones on third. He wasn't sure if I said soap it's bubbles or soup, soup bubbles. So I got right. both because I'm a perfectionist. The Jones on third soap is really great. It's so good. It's, it's good yeah. soap. Yeah. And then, and then he said, wow, thank you so much. Can you deliver me a titty twister right now? And I did How it. polite? Why are you po- more polite to him than you are to me? When He's in the show? service industry. <laughs> I'm sort of performing what? a service here. Really? <laughs> All right. I mean, Scott. To be honest, I don't know if you could handle the little job like Postmates. I don't. I don't know that I want one. I mean, it seems to it's be not about a- want, Scott. I'm saying I don't know if you could handle it. Wait, wait, okay. What are the requirements here? All right. First of all, you gotta have a car. I okay. I do have one of those. So is that it? I mean, well, maybe you can handle it. <laughs> okay, that's all. <laughs> That's his one, one even, requirement. I didn't even think about it because yeah, yeah. You know what? You could probably handle it, Scott. Okay. You have a car. Well, uh, uh, I have to say, uh, Rudy, mm-hmm. uh, and I, I knew your name. I didn't have to look down at my notes. <laughs> it seemed as though <laughs> It's such a forgot- nondescript name, Rudy North, <laughs> it, it, it for seemed- such an interesting person. Well, that's yeah. what I did want to talk about that because the, 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 this whole interesting is person thing, that was a lot of pressure, Scott. That's, I'm sorry. I don't mean to put that Do on I, you. I mean, that's I, more of a Neil thing. Yeah, I don't know if I I'm find that one of the most interesting is to people. I don't really? know if I'm that interesting. I mean, yes, I'm a mortal. Wait, can you be yeah. clearer in the way you said that? <laughs> immortal? You're immortal or immortal? I, I don't know if we have time for that. I mean, we I got, know. We, we I don't might think have we to do. talk about another podcast about that. <laughs> yeah, we're, run, we're running out of time. <laughs> yeah, this is, the <laughs> this <laughs> is when you bring this up? That's or? when yeah. you drop that bomb? Yeah, I wanted to talk about post face. Number one, one. Ah, funny stuff. Funny stuff. Funny stuff. Now, that is the... Just the beginning of the lore of Rudy Rudimentary North, Mm -hmm. the Postmates employee, (laughs) professional dirtbag, constantly postponing, telling me uh, all the details of his immortality immortality in his life. The uh, throat punching is established here. You can hear him sort of like, what's interesting is is now he has refined 
this character to a degree uh, mm-hmm. over the past year in his many appearances where some things that he accidentally says in that clip, mm-hmm. um, like throat punching, I think was just something that came up out of the blue. That yeah. wasn't something he planned on necessarily. Uh, that's become full canon, as he says. So yes. it's interesting to hear the beginnings of a character like that. Well, also the throat punching became a, a magical thing. <laughs> Yes, it, it bef- did. At first, it was just a way to disable someone yes. to, so you could take their stuff. Uh, and, also, and, and, also, and he starts off the clip just saying that he took over their life. He doesn't yeah. say he throat punched them. That yeah. comes up a little later in yeah, the clip yeah, yeah, yeah. of how he did it. Yeah. And the immortality was just something he riffed <laughs> yeah. there. Um, but that's it's it's great to hear the, uh, the first uh, appearance of a character that has become uh, such a wonderful addition to the show. Um, all right. That is. All right. All right. All right. Look. Look. This we, is what we said was going to happen, and this is what happened. Look, we're not breaking any promises. Promises made, promises kept. <laughs> <laughs> we said we would go down 14, 13, 12, 11, and we did it. And we did it in the order that we said we would do it. In the order we said we would do it. Now, um, I do want to uh, – we're, we're going we're to be back on Thursday, and we're going to be counting down 10, 9, 8, and 7. 10, 9, nine 8, eight and, and 7. seven. Um, uh, but before we do that, I want to leave the episode. Uh, we have had many wonderful uh, musical guests – musical guests <laughs> – <laughs> over the past year, and I wanted to highlight uh, one of them, uh, and we'll take you out with this um, – we have uh, Mr. Heavenly was on uh, at the end of That's the previous right. year. That is uh, the band that Engineer Brett plays in. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, they did a, it is Christmas Eve, so I wanted to uh, play a little song that they played on our uh, Christmas episode last year um, that has a little bit of holiday flair to take us out. It's called The Wandering Jew's Christmas. <laughs> I don't think it is. But let's hear from that, Mr. Heavenly, and we will see the rest of you. The rest of you? <laughs> we'll see the rest of you. <laughs> I guess okay, everyone Mr. other than Mr. Mr. Heavenly. <laughs> Mr. Heavenly. They're not going to be listening. We will not see you this Thursday. We'll not see you this Thursday. The, the rest, rest of you, you, we definitely will see. <laughs> we will see you on Thursday uh, for part two of our countdown. Thanks for listening, everyone. Take it away, Mr. Heavenly. R.I.B.
I'm Paul F. Tompkins. My podcast, Spontanean Nation, is wrapping up at episode 200, and that final show will drop on Monday, January 21st. We'll have one of our favorite guests in for an interview and an extra-long improv set featuring an expanded lineup of Spontanean Nation All-Stars. Whether you've been a fan from day one or you've never even heard the show before, I hope you'll listen to this very special episode. Happy New Year!